Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to a special combined meeting of the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Health. Uh, it is 4 12 p.m. on Monday, October 17th. This meeting is being recorded. The listing of matters are those reasonably anticipated by the chair, which may be discussed at the meeting. Not all items listed may in fact be discussed and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by law. This agenda is subject to revisions and additions prior to the meeting. Uh, since it is a joint meeting, I will call the Board of Selectmen to order, and then Ms. Katabia, if you could do the same for the Board of Health. Uh, with that being said, um, Mr. Pacheco? Present. Mr. Karen? Present. Chairman Leonard Hull is also present. Ms. Katabia. I'd like to open this meeting of the Board of Health at 4.16 p.m., October 17th. Well, to order. And uh, by our community of president, also Nicole Mello, president. Thank you for Thank you very much. Um, with that being said, Mr. Mullen, I believe. But yes, so I have an introduction. Uh, we met, I believe, a few weeks ago. Uh, uh, we really level set it and uh, be able to discuss uh, the different options that have been proposed by the Board of Health. Uh, when we met, we also, we also discussed uh, that we reached out to Mass uh, Association of Health Boards and um, to ask them uh, like for their help and expertise and really helping to guide us forward. Uh, uh, and with, the, um, with us, this happened we are Mike Hugo. Uh, who is the director of policy uh, for the Association Health Boards? Uh, we also have Cheryl Sabara, the executive director of the association, who will be joining us as well. Um, 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 uh, they came um, uh, with uh, a PowerPoint presentation that um, um, uh, they were hoping to be able to present. Uh, oh, you know, oh. Uh, Oh yeah, but really like that, like I think Mike will uh, you know like really so yeah, like so yeah, really we're not the only town in the Commonwealth going through the challenges that we're going through. Um oh, oh you know the challenges that we're going through are uh, you know like being reconciled, so like have been recognized by the legislature, by the Department of Public Health as well, uh, like that. Um and uh, so so I think the timing that we're coming together to do this, uh, I'm actually, I'm actually really timely because you know, like it fits in with like a broader overall strategy. Uh, like really that has started before our uh, you know, pre-pandemic, uh, but the pandemic really caught to light a lot of the issues that we're all facing. And so, um, so yeah, like we're very excited to have the expertise um, on the uh, you know, really join us in helping form this process. So, Mike. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll just start off by just a little background. Well, I expect Cheryl any second, but I, I'm ready to go into hers if I have to. But for a little bit of background, um, my familiarity with this group that you're now when it comes to uh, pulling the Public Health Excellence Grant together and forming the group. Uh, that we eventually formed with you know, five. And uh, I've been meeting regularly with, with Mr. Mullen, and uh, Nicole has been attending the meetings for the past couple of months religiously. And we've been meeting what, pretty much every single week, right? Even if it's only for a couple of minutes as a check in. I watched, uh, I watched the proceedings from October 3rd yesterday. Um, one hour and 43 minutes, but I spent like three and a half hours. I, I took copious notes. I've got pages upon pages of notes that I took from it. And there's, there's a couple of things that I think we should start out with before we get into our prepared remarks for today. First of all, uh, your town was part of round three of the public 
health excellence grant. There were two rounds that, that started about two years ago. And you're part of the, that now there's a round four that's way, way, way behind. But the round three towns, everybody's pretty much in the same exact location. Uh, most of them have not hired a shared services coordinator yet, uh, which would precede having hiring the other the other uh, elements of the grants, the other like the inspectors or whoever else it is that you all decide that you want to hire. Uh, it's really the decisions that are being made on a day-to-day -day basis on the grant are being made by the health departments, by the boards of health. Uh, and their agents show up for these weekly meetings, and I'm presuming that the boards of health are being kept up to speed on, on what's going on uh, at these meetings. But the fact that I, one of the things that was said yesterday was, well, yes, I'm sorry, I it. one of the things I saw on, on the recording yesterday was that there's a feeling that the, that the grant is dragging, and that's that's absolutely correct when it comes to this round. Uh, I actually sort of have a little a little side gig that I'm doing. Um, I'm the shared services coordinator for the grant on the islands, Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket. And on, on the islands, Martha's Vineyard is six towns, six boards of health, 18 board of health members, six health directors, uh, and boards of selectmen that tell the health directors, hey, why are you wasting our taxpayer money by talking to the people from Shulmark? You should be dealing with our town only. So that was the mentality that we walked into, that I walked into to try to get them to participate in the grant. That grant is very high functioning. That grant has uh, ha has a full-time, um, well, a very part-time shared service coordinator, a full-time community health worker, uh, a inspector. And in that, in that case, they hired a biologist because they have a tick and a huge issue with their Lyme disease affecting their whole economy. Islands. So that, that's an example of one that's way ahead. That grant at this point has had a uh, has, has invested twenty thousand dollars in uh, anti-racism training for the summer camps. They had an incident two summers ago where a couple of white campers decided to be kind of cool to tie a noose around the black camper's neck and tie it to a post. And the camp's whole response was, "Hey, that's not a good thing to do," which was very insufficient response. So now the boards of health on the island uh, have put together with the grant money the training that they gave to all of the camp counselors and directors uh, at the beginning of the season. And uh, now they're doing the, the, the statistical work to see what the effects were. It was a very successful program. And uh, uh, in addition to that, they have, they've put together a community health survey for all of the citizens of both islands. It's always been said that one in five has a substance disorder on the island, uh, but nobody has any statistics, so they're developing that. So that's where the grant can go. And I, I'm just using that to show you where this grant can go in the future. Um, the inspector actually has been poached already. Uh, we, we found a brand new out of college uh, biology graduate uh, who came in and wanted to become involved in public health, but the grant couldn't pay her enough money. And the town of Edgartown poached her from the grant. So we're we're thinking about hiring someone else, but we're not going to do it yet until after the capacity assessment that I'm going to talk about when I get into my prepared remarks. So you're not really behind the curve. That's the most important thing I want to start out with. Is that the grant is the grant is going to catch up. You will catch up to where rounds one and two are Cheryl Spar. Good afternoon. Yeah. I put together, I'm just telling her now, I put together a slideshow for this. So, and you're going to do the first few. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, all right, so um, well, that is a backdrop, just so, so that you're not sitting here thinking, well, geez, this is all wonderful, but where are we in the picture? You're right where you should be. There were, there were uh, seven or six new grants that were put together in round three. You're one of six. Nobody's ahead of you. And uh, uh, we'll talk about why that's a good thing in a couple of minutes. But I put together these are in, in this um, and okay. you can advance them with um, this. Can you just do that? Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay. Um, first of all, I know some of you, not all of you. Um, I am Cheryl Sabara. I am the senior staff attorney and the executive director of the Massachusetts Association of Health Boards. 
I'm sorry I'm repeating this for some of you, but we are a not-for-profit membership association. Um, we provide technical assistance and legal education, not legal advice. Your town council provides you with legal advice to the 351 local boards of health in Massachusetts. Um, we've been in operation since the early 80s, and I have been with MAHB for the past 22 years. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about what the local public health system looks like in Massachusetts and what we're aspiring to through the Special Commission's blueprint on local and regional public health excellence. And we're going to talk about how that is being implemented strategically through the Department of Public Health and the Department of Environmental Protection um, at the request and urging of the state legislature. And we'll also talk about how it's being funded, the implementation of this blueprint. So I'm going to have to look at that. Okay. Um, so local public health combines so many areas of expertise. It is um, pretty astounding when you look at what local public health is charged with in by the legislature through statutes and through state regulation local with public regulations and the local bylaws to help to address public health. So um, the ones I'm familiar with, um, I'll start not. I'll start at like one o'clock um, with environmental health. That's what you know. Boards of health are charged with protecting public health, and that includes protecting our food system, our septic system, our pools, um, housing, and things that are basically encompassed in the state sanitary. We're also responsible for. Um, letting the state know about and controlling infectious diseases. We're all very familiar with that over the past couple of years with COVID-19. We are also charged with um, addressing through outreach, through prevention programs, and through software interventions, substance use disorder, tobacco control, and um, other mental health issues. You see it a lot from a board of health perspective when you're looking at hoarding issues in um, your town. I'm sorry, hoarding? Hoarding oh, okay. issues within your town because hoarding issues really stem initially from a mental health issue. So, um, we're, and these are all things that are within our statutory and regulatory obligations as they exist right now. These aren't new issues, these exist right now. Emergency repair probably very familiar with because of the grants that come into hospital medical coordinating coalitions and through your own emergency preparedness work. Immunizations, again, COVID brought that right um, center for us. Um, community health and prevention. This is something that a lot of people are unaware of, but what the, the, the Center for Dis Disease Control and Prevention is charged boards of health with um, these kind of prevention interventions to encourage healthy eating and active living, which clearly affect our um, healthcare system and the money that we spend on healthcare because of many diseases. If we concentrate on healthy eating and healthy living, policy development that's when you're thinking of enacting regulations. I know you. Are, are considering some state regulations I saw on the agenda, um, your tobacco control regulations, any regulations you have on Title V, um, and, and that would also include all of your permits, your tobacco sales permit, your food service permits, um, any kind of permits would also be considered in the tobacco policy development realm. Um, health education and outreach, that often results in some of the issues that we have, especially hoarding issues, and then data analysis and reporting. And I left that one for last because that's a challenge not only for local boards of health, but it's also been a challenge for the Department of Public Health. When we on the special commission, I was one of the 
folks on the special commission. And I was on the subcommittee that was looking at data. And we went to the Department of Public Health to try to ascertain what data they actually had so we could get some sort of baseline. Like, where are we now? And what do we need to improve? We couldn't figure out where we were at the beginning of this endeavor because the data was all over the place. It was housed in different places. Some of the data, one of the most astounding things to me was the um, food service data, the restaurant inspections. There was there's a requirement that restaurant inspection data be given back to the Department of Public Health. Well, what the department was, was collecting, some municipalities gave it back, some didn't. And when they gave it back, it was just a form that said we, we inspect basically. It didn't say what the violations were, what the follow-up was. So it was it was useless for determining a baseline. What, what we figured out in that subcommittee was the baseline was we didn't have one. So um, that that was the initial funding that went to local public health, really went to the Department of Public Health and the Department of Environmental Protection so that they could create a data system that actually works that produces valuable data where we can actually measure what, what we're doing and boards of health locals could get that data and um, you know, look at it, compare themselves to other municipalities around them, et cetera. So that's a big piece of what's, what's happening statewide and, and what we're encouraging to happen locally so that there's a uniform data collection system. So um, this is one way of looking at what local public health is charged with. And again, this is just the regulatory and statutory obligations that you have. I certainly cannot see that. So I'm gonna, I have it in a, in a different form and I'm only gonna mention a few of them. Oh, you've got it on the next slide. Okay, I still can't see those. So, um, what, what those are, I did a slide and I pulled out some of them from it. So these are just some of the many obligations for local public health. You need to assure safe drinking water. You need to enforce the state sanitary code, which again includes food, housing, um, numerous other issues in the state sanitary code food protection laws and regulations, the housing code, septic systems in private world, let us talk about isolation and quarantine. The laws on isolation and quarantine are so old that statute says if someone is ordered to be either isolated or quarantined, he gets, he or she get their um, daily wages and the amount that's set for those daily wages is $2. That's how old those statutes are. Um, so we, and I'm going on our side, but MAHP, our agency figured out a way to make it easier for cities and towns to actually um, get to isolation and quarantine without having to go to court. And medical and biological waste. Um, I mean, so this, this is just some of what boards are charged with. And so you can see from there just how great the knowledge base needs to be. The local public health in Massachusetts. So, um, as I said, we have 351 local public health boards in Massachusetts, boards of health. Um, and we never, until the last couple of years, had a line item in the state budget that was dedicated to health departments. We have a charity sheet, and that gives municipalities money coming from the state, but there was no line item for boards of health. So essentially, whatever town meeting determined to be the budget for the health departments was what the budget was. Now, there were some, there are some grants that you can apply for from the state if you have someone who can write a grant. Um, and there are uh, grant opportunities and collaboratives like the tobacco control collaboratives, but there was no funding that was dedicated to boards of health coming from state taxes. So this really put us in a position where, depending upon where you lived, that really determined what public health services you were actually getting. 
And it could be, you could have towns, and, and we did a survey on this, you could have towns, each of which had a population of 30,000. And one town could spend um, 600,000 on, on public health, and the other could spend 50,000. Because it was whatever town meeting decided um, was the value of worth of public health, um, even though public health is a core function of government. And I think we were comparing Melrose with Randolph, and they were the same size. And when we looked at the budgets, Melrose was four times as large and had four times as many staff members as Randolph did, even though Randolph had poorer health outcomes. So, you know, it depends not only on what the town meeting allocates, but also it depends on the tax base in the municipality. So the poorer municipalities have fewer dollars to work with, and they have to decide between every other um, department within the municipality. So as a result, of many, many, many municipalities that do not meet the current statutory and regulatory requirements. And I think that it's probably where my need to come no, in. Oh, yeah. right, yeah. okay. so, so we have a lot that are to do that. And the special commission, the first part of the special commission, the only dealing with right now is to attempt to get every municipality to be able to perform the current required statutory and regulatory duties. We're not looking at the foundational public health services that we want to aspire to, or that we do aspire to. We're just looking at what is currently required for local public health. So um, this is the commission, and it was actually a law that was enacted. It was sponsored by, by Representative Dean Carver. Um, in 2016, and I remember going to her office on this, and she was a Board of Health member first, and then she became a state representative, and she was also a nurse. So she was really familiar with what public health needed to do, and she came from a very well-resourced municipality. She came from the... So they did a lot of proactive things. They didn't do everything because they couldn't, but they, they did a lot. So she championed this bill that was um, submitted to the legislature, and the legislature enacted an act to create a special commission that would look at the effectiveness and the efficiency of the public health systems in existence in Massachusetts. And there were some districts, especially in the western part of the state, which has less population, bigger geography. A lot of those municipalities were working together at that time. So that's what we were charged with doing, and we were um, uh, we were appointed by the governor, and um, and we came from all walks of life. And one of the most interesting things um, about the commission was it was made up of people, not only those of us that are public health geeks, but we also had um, Republicans and Democrats from the legislature. We had the Mass Taxpayers Association, on when she heard when I did a presentation on what local public health looked like, her first thought was just take it away from locals and give it to the state. They're, they're not they can't they can't do it. And of course, in a state that's a home rule state, you can't you can't take this away from locals. Plus, if that, that doesn't work either because the state isn't equipped to actually do we're doing locally where we know the people, we know the geography, we know the issues. So she had ended up, um, Eileen Mackin, if you know, she ended up being one of the largest proponents. She testified before the state legislature, before various committees, and she is one of our hugest supporters. That's probably not the right word, but she is a, a, a really stalwart supporter of the blueprint for public health excellence. She sees it as the only way. And what she sees from the taxpayer's point of view is that if we fix the local system, we're going to really bring down healthcare costs. And that's what, what the Mass Taxpayers Association is about. We also have the Mass Hospital Association. We had the Mass Municipal Association. We had a lot of people, administration, finance, a lot of people in the room that were not. Um, 
living in our world of public health. And the, and the report was uh, it was it was a consensus unanimous support for it. So um, we ended up with several recommendations that came out for strengthening the local public health system. And um, that's what these public health excellence grants are designed to do. Not the only thing that will be done in the realm of local public health, but they're the first thing that is, is, is being done with the money. And we have, and Mike knows this better than I do, but we have a line item, I think $15 million now in um, the most recent legislative appropriation. We never, we, we had a line item a couple of years ago. It started at, I think, 1.2 million. We're up now to 15 million. That is a that doesn't go away. It may get decreased. Right now, we will probably just continue to get increased because the legislature has supported all the bills that we proposed unanimously. After COVID, they saw what local health was charged with doing and how they weren't able to do what they what, what they needed to do and what they wanted to do because they didn't have enough staff. Not that they didn't have, well, in some cases that they didn't have the expertise, but in a lot of cases that they, that they didn't have the staff that they needed to do the job that they needed to do. So, is it still me? That's just three six oh, recommendations. Okay, the so these were the recommendations <laughs> that the special commission um, outlined. One, as I just alluded to, establishing workforce credentials. Right now, if you if you want to be a health inspector, um, you just apply. Um, there are no qualifications that accompany that position. Um, we have health inspectors that are right out of high school. We have health inspectors that have masters in science. You know, they're just all over the place when it comes to um, the credentials that that they have when they're entering. Um, my health director, when I work at a local board of health, and I won't tell you the town, he was a retired butcher. And he was the health director for the town. Um, so that is one of the goals of, of the special of the blueprint, is to establish some workforce credentials. There will be, and, and, and this is what the PA to be charged with now, there will be some, air, some time, some instances where you can have or an or inspector that's been in the municipality for many, many years and it's more of a experience, there's a way to grandfather um, that person in if, if that's what the town wants to do. Um, another issue is to really, sustainability is really important. We're getting a lot of folks now in the public health field that are retiring. We're seeing a lot of that, especially since um, the pandemic. Um, we're looking at setting a higher standard other than just meeting the current statutory and um, regulatory obligations, which is a huge lift. We also want to look at setting foundational public health services as the goal. Um, we're looking at, as I said, data collection, and we're looking at um, really trying to resource boards of health in a way that makes sense. That they and we're also, we want to encourage shared public health services. We, we don't want to touch legal authority of words of health. That's really important. But we do want to look at better, more efficient ways of delivering services over different, you know, when we combine different municipalities. Police and fire do it. We're looking at, um, and, that, and that's basically what the public health excellence plans are working to do. Just I guess I'll pick up from here. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> I should have let her know I was doing this. I love surprising. All right, so uh, building on what Cheryl was talking about uh, from the blueprint, um, there were a couple of major things that we're going to be concentrating on today. And one of them is establishing the performance standards, uh, which uh, was begun when the program, when the public health excellence program rolled out. Uh, and then the other is to really assess the capacity, the assessment tool itself, uh, to assess the capacity of performance. Now, you have you have a uh, you have a health agent who does a lot of uh, 
Title V, a lot of uh, the, the wastewater and things of that sort. There's, you saw a whole lot of circles on there that, that can't be filled in by the current constituted health department that you have here. They can't be because you don't have all of the people that are trained in those areas. You don't have the resources allocated to some of those areas yet. Uh, and that's, uh, that's why we're really, what you're doing right now, the timing is nearly perfect for doing what you're doing. Because through this, through this program, one of the things that's going to be happening is uh, uh, there's going to be this, this capacity assessment. It's already begun for, for uh, have you, you haven't been, you have received the capacity assessment, is that right? Yeah, we completed it in Okay, so there's, it's a three part setup. The first part is a questionnaire that went to the health agents and directors in 351 cities and And it involved basically, it was 100 and I think 180 questions. It took about an hour to do, um, although some people struggled and spent hours on it. But it, it was designed to take an hour to do, but, but it was designed by people who do nothing but this. So I'm sure it took a lot longer than an hour, right? Am I getting, am I getting well, I had to confirm with like six other people who right. answers to the questions. And right. I couldn't answer them all. So that's, but in, a, in an ideal world, it should take an hour. It didn't. Uh, but the questions really, really were designed to lift the band-aid up and just sort of let the air get to what's going on in the health department. And uh, based upon that raw data, uh, the state will be making some determinations. We're going to get to that in a second. But uh, the second phase, which is ongoing right now, and actually I think the deadline is Today it was also the twelfth. It was the twelfth of the extended. Okay, yeah, which is right. The extended was to today, and and the idea is that on on round one it was the health directors or agents, number one person in the health department. The second round goes to everybody in town who touches on public health. So that would be everybody. That would be the board of health members have to be number two. Uh, the the health agents have to do a number two, even though they did the number one questionnaire. Uh, the support staff, the administrative assistant, uh, inspectors, every single person in the town that touches on public health has to be number two. And then that's all being compiled. And the next round is that all of the documents that are being used, the regulations, the forms for inspection, everything that every type of paper or electronic information that's collected in the town has to be pulled together and sent to the Department of Public Health. Now it's being done by an outside agency and that's partially by design because we're asking boards of health and health departments not just to rip off the band-aid, but to really sort of, I don't want to use the word come clean, but that's kind of the closest thing I can think of. This is this is the moment where the where the health department tells the state, this is what we can do. And we know we can't, we nobody except maybe Boston, possibly Springfield. No. No, I'm not Springfield. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, Springfield's not in the So but probably Boston is the is the gold standard with its with its thousand people are working public health with its, I don't know how many hundreds of millions no. of a budget that go to Boston. Boston's not even in the questionnaire. Boston's not in the grant program because the idea behind the grant program and the capacity assessment is to bring all of the boats to the same tide that Boston is functioning on today. Now, that's going to cost some money. And I'm going to get into that in a second. Oh, the stomach won't be vibrating and striking. Um, so, this is this is the, the, the blue towns on this map are all the towns that are now in public health and excellence square. And you see Boston is, is gray. There's a couple of towns that have held out, actually that little kite shaped town um, in Western Mass, that's Tyringham, 
their turn right now. But you can see that there are 310 cities and towns within 351 that are in the grant program today. There are 50 grant groups. And uh, this is true, this is a, as of, actually not as of today, or I would have had tearing in, I apologize. But that's the only exception on that. And so the, this is the size of, of what we're talking about. Now, what we have to do is all of these towns have to be functioning on the same on the same level. And so some of the grant programs have have been used, as I told you before, uh, with the, the one I've been working on. We have an inspector, we have a community health worker. Some have hired nurses, some have hired, uh, the only one has hired the biologist, and that was unique to the to the islands, but many have hired nurses, many have hired uh, different types of inspectors. Some have hired building inspectors that do nothing but buildings and go to court. Because as, as your health director would tell you, uh, if they have a housing inspection issue and it goes to court, the your, your staff that you're paying, that your board of health is paying, is sitting in a courthouse watching domestic abuse and watching uh, speeding tickets. And eventually the clerk will say, is there anything else? Oh yeah, I've got this housing thing uh, from the town of such and such. And, and then now it's three o'clock in the afternoon, the day shot. So some of the groups are actually hiring housing inspectors so they can go through all of that aggravation and sit there and, and then go defend what they're doing. Some are, are dealing with uh, opioid and substance use disorder issues. It's, it's just, it's all across the board. Um, but one of the, one of the things that, that, that is, a, is key to this is that while all of this is being pulled together, the state is looking at standardizing the reporting mechanisms. And that's, that's the, uh, the establishment piece of data systems. Now, um, the blueprint also wants workforce development. Um, toward that end, right now, if, if you wanted to get trained in soil, you would uh, travel the state. Did you go to our own state? It's, it's, a, it's a mess. You have to go to the Western Mass for some of it. You go, you can go all over the state. It took, how long did it take you to do your soil training? Well, it was only like a week. I did it back in 94. Oh, okay. But today, today it's, it's like six months. Right. And then you wait on a waiting list for a year to get tested. So under the program, what's, what they're doing now is they've set up 10 regional training hubs uh, all across the state on, on, on paper and theory. Should not have to drive more than an hour to get to any of them. So from here, uh, there'll be there's actually the closest to here will be New Bedford. And and so instead of having to go to Northampton or something, it's, it's all right here. All of the trainings and all of the certifications. The workforce assessment that, that I've been talking about will, once the numbers are crunched, will tell the state that this particular grouping needs the following. And they're not doing it by the towns. There are six towns, I believe, in your group. Is that right? There's, I think there's six yeah. in your group. Yeah. So, so then instead of saying that, that the town of Dighton is deficient here, here, and here, which opens you up to some criticism in the community, opens you up to social media attacks, which are too plentiful these days. Uh, so instead of any discernible data having to do with your town, that's not there. It, de it deals with the shortcomings and the needs of a particular region. I don't want to use the word region in the sense of regionalization, but a particular grouping of towns. So the data will say that the that the North that the North Attleboro group, because that's your host community, North mm -hmm. Attleboro, needs. Three inspectors needs uh, uh, new tablets and, and software to do all of the inspection on, needs a nurse, needs whatever it is. Uh, and I'm gonna sort of get away from the, the slides because I think that what I'm talking about is, is in so many of the slides that I'm more comfortable just talking to you straight now. So the, the identified and the funding, I will show you just one slide. The funding comes from two sources. One is the state budget line item, which this year is $15 million, even though we asked for $13 million. And 
something very strange happened. We actually had the Senate tell us we didn't ask for enough money. Tell me when you've ever heard a senator tell you, oh, that's good, you can ask me enough. But they came back and they said 13 is insufficient and gave us 15. Uh, and then we have $200 million from ARPA. There was a discussion in your meeting on the third about uh, some of the uh, some of the funding that was that came in from state and federal sources that went to other things and uh, public health in almost 351 of the 351 towns, public health didn't get very much of the money that came from a public health crisis. So uh, the state legislature recognized that and said we need to earmark $200 million uh, from the ARPA funding to go directly to public health on the local level. So if the state at the end of the capacity assessment says that the North Attleboro group needs two inspectors and needs, a, needs two nurses and needs the following equipment and, that they, and they're gonna be buying iPads and software for every single health inspector in Massachusetts. When they're done with saying, this is what they need, they're gonna, the next line out of their mouth is gonna be, and here's the money to do it. So there's no unfunded mandate and, and public health as, as Cheryl was just describing how you go to your to your uh, town meeting and beg for money every year for, for your health department. I did it for years in Framingham where I'm from. The first year I went, I did terrible. I got level funded. I was asking for 15% raise and I got level funded and couldn't figure out what happened. And then I realized that when I was arguing to town meeting, I was talking about a health department that had a director and assistant director, three, four inspectors, two social workers and two nurses. And I was asking them for more money and they couldn't figure out why I would be asking for more money because they didn't know about that circle that Cheryl showed you and that, that page of other obligations. And, and the health department was doing well. So a good health department functioning on all cylinders is invisible. You don't even know that they are until there's a problem in town. If there's a restaurant that you have to close down if somebody dies in a restaurant or uh, gets very sick, uh, if there's a, a building that's condemned because of, of uh, uh, even, even something as simple as hoarding, that gets in the news. And so people know there's a board of health, they know what the health department does. But if everything's working right, you're invisible. So what's, what's anticipated with this funding is that everyone will be, will be treated the same. Everyone will get all of the resources that they need. There's well, money there. subject to the to appropriation. Subject to appropriation, that's exactly right. Exactly. Although the but that's how much that exists now. Right, the 200 million is, is going out, right? And that's actually in <coughs> slide, yes, okay. This slide shows you how the 200 million is divided. And uh, uh, take a look, you can see the uh, infrastructure is, is one goal um, under the capacity building. The other is, is to uh, address health disparities. We saw some incredible health disparities over the last two years. Uh, and this, this actually affected every portion of our population from the elderly to the students to every, everybody was affected by the health disparities. So there's $71 million, $71.15 million for addressing those issues. The workforce development, which is the regional training hubs, and uh, making sure that all of the people on your staff have all the certifications that they need. Uh, that's part of the questionnaire process is what do you have for certifications? Uh, Cheryl and I uh, do a certificate program for Board of Health members across the state. We did one last Saturday. Uh, it was Thursday virtual night. Thursday night. I'm sorry. We usually do them on Saturdays live. Uh, and time will actually suppose it's one of the way that we do. But, um, uh, we those those trainings have been very loosey goosey, sort of like if you can go, it's a wonderful thing to do. Uh, as a result of the workforce development standards, your board of health members will pretty much be required to attend uh, the the education programs that are given, so that when they sit here in front of the board of selectmen and they select and ask a specific question about a specific duty or responsibility and, and what the frequency of that is you'll get an answer because they will have that data available through, through all of this also. And then that's the third piece is the data systems and performance tracking. And that's really, that's more centered towards 
tying everybody together. I mentioned to you in the very beginning that uh, that on the island is, is that this talk of one in five have substance use disorders. There's no data that's showing. This money here is going to help us to develop what your needs are as far as your aging population and diabetes is concerned. You have an aging population and diabetes. I know I've got that. Look at your, at your numbers and stuff. And, and uh, what's going on in the schools and your school districts around here with kids coming back from, uh, from, from COVID, not knowing how to socialize, and all of those issues that are coming out from that. There's money to, to capture the data so that you have some idea of what you're going after. And then there's money to, to develop the workforce to both tackle it, and then there's money there to, uh, to, to, to make it so it's sustainable. That's not the 200 million now. The $15 million line item, which is what the grants are run on, and let me pick up on a couple of things on the Public Health Excellence Grant. It's actually a nine-year program, uh, and it's actually $200,000 a year uh, in three three-year cycles. So the current cycle, I think there's two and a half years left when you came into it, but there still are two more uh, cycles down the line on that. And when that was originated, it was thought at the time that if we can't make this happen in nine years, it's just never going to happen. And then COVID happened. And, and it sort of catapulted everything that we're talking about right now, which was not back burner, but not talking in the back burner. But it catapulted everything to the front burner. Now everybody in the public knows what the Board of Health does what their what their function is and protecting the town from, from disease and all of that. So the timing, while COVID was a tragedy, there was a silver lining for public health. It brought us out into the forefront, and uh, uh, that's that's what we're what we're hoping is that uh, the fifteen million dollar line will become a permanent line item uh, in the in the budget for the state department of public health. And we won't have to go back to the legislature every year if you've done it the last two, three years uh, with complete success. We, we actually had unanimous passage in the Senate and unanimous passage in the House. So the, the, everybody in the legislature understands the importance of this. Now it's an idea of making this so that it's always going to be there. So that you'll always have the same communities working. There may be something come and go. And come and go is important, just one important point. The agreement that's be, that will be proposed to your group, uh, as far as an intermunicipal agreement that will come before you as the Board of Selectmen, has a provision in it that there's a 30, a 90 day opt out. So anywhere in the existence of this of this grant program, if the town of Dighton says we're not getting we're not getting our, our due here, we don't want to be part of it. It's 90 days to get out. You're not stuck with it forever. Although I don't think they'll ever be able to pull it. I don't I don't see that. So I don't know if today. I think that's the last for I think. Thank you. Does, it, does that help? Yes, very much so. I believe we're going to have questions. Well, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pacheco, do you have any questions? My only question uh, right now is um, how many border health that you're familiar with? Do they all get involved with stormwater? Pretty much. Yeah, because everywhere yeah no they, there's been some discussion that given it to another department in town so i was wondering if it's normally a, a health department function in collaboration obviously sure. with the other departments to uh, rectify the situation but it's normally a board of function it's in the list of students thank you thank you is there a percentage um that the state recommends the town budgets be for that account. was what they're working on. That was okay. one of the things that they did not have. There, that's one of the things that the legislation that was passed unanimously but wasn't signed by the governor. So they put that, that piece, but that's one of the things that DPH is charged with to look at what should be a funding formula okay. that municipalities can. Use the guidance, not mandated, but the guidance. The guidance, okay. In the 15 million, um, who, who, who and how did they come up with that figure? They came up with it based upon a proposal that the legislature asked 
the what's called the Coalition of Local Public Health. Okay. It's an entity made up of the state um, public health membership association. So the boards of health, the health officers, the environmental health officers, the public health nurses, and the Massachusetts Public Health Association. The Public Health Association is really our, our, our chief advocates. That's, that's what they do. But we are the content experts. So we put together um, what we felt we needed, and we came up with a million dollar ask, and they added 15, another okay. couple of million. Right. Dollars, and gave us that. Okay. And my last question is what is the benefit to grouping the communities? as opposed to just taking them individually? Is it to save face or? Well, no, it, it's, it's, I can give you certain examples. Um, every, every municipality is charged with having someone who can inspect pools. Right. Uh, there may be, I don't know how many pools Dighton has. Uh, just a couple. But... A couple. And however, North Attleboro may have 20 or 25, mm -hmm. depending on how many kind of associations they may have right. that have pools. So Dyke doesn't need a full-time pool inspector to inspect right. two pools. So the idea would be if you're sharing services, then someone who, um, you don't need an expert in pool inspections. You just need your pools inspected by someone who is an expert in pool inspections. Why can't that be a shared service okay. so that you're not spending the money that you don't need? Um, in addition, if you're sharing, there are some, some instances where you're going to want your local staff to be addressing issues. You're not going to want a shared service inspector. And Mike uses an example, you're doing restaurant inspections and you have some really troubling establishments that have been out for a long time. You may want your health inspectors to be concentrating on those more complicated restaurant inspections. And you may want the easy ones to go to someone who can do them for a geographic area because you're not going to have the time to do your inspector may not have the time to do all of them. They want to concentrate on what the priority areas are in your municipality. Another um, shared service is one is nursing and one is looking at a community outreach person. This goes back to the hoarding issue mm -hmm. where you can address the housing code violations and the fire can address the exit and the egress and entrance issues that, that are, are going on. But who can get to them for why is this happening? What kind of therapy can you use? Who can contact the family? That may be a, someone who you would share amongst municipalities. Those are some examples okay. of why you I really want to. I just want to by one thing the, the sharing model. Is not that uh, the inspector will be in Attleboro on Monday, and North Attleboro on Tuesday, and Dighton and Berkeley on Wednesday. That's not how it works. The sharing model is that that your staffs, all of your all of your workers, the, the, the inspectors, the health agents, the nurses, they're all going to be included in the discussion when uh, when we get to the point where we start to decide what this particular group needs for manpower. And, or, or for staffing, I hate to use the word uh, and, and it may be, it, it may be say, say a food inspector might be needed. You don't have a lot of restaurants. In fact, that has no. just a handful. Yeah. yeah. So, but it, what would happen is that uh, your health agents and your inspectors will no longer have to do low risk food because the shared inspector is going to do all the low risk food in the area, take that off of everybody's plate. And then once that's accomplished, because it won't take a whole year to do it, right. there'll be other stuff sprinkled in by the by the by the various towns. One town is saying we need a little bit more of this, we need a little bit less of that. So that that over the course of the first year or so will sort of start to get defined. But it's not going to be that one inspector goes to one town on one given day. However, I heard something about a couch investment. Is that really? That is correct. Is that, is <laughs> that is, that is no, 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 that doesn't happen to you. Yeah. <laughs> so for the cow chip festival, you're gonna you might have food trucks right. contributing to the cow chip population. And so you're going to need 
more inspectors than what you have because the, what happens is the food trucks show up at 8 a.m. They have to be inspected so they can be open by 10. And if you have 20 food trucks, I don't know how many you have, but mm -hmm. it takes a while to do each one. Right. And so that would be where you're a shared inspector. If, if Nicole was going to be running a clinic uh, for, for, for giving immunizations, it might be that she could say, let's do, let's do Diamond Berkeley and, and uh, uh, Tonic together in one big clinic. And she would work with a shared nurse to make sure that that your portion of that is, is present day. Okay. Okay, so it's it's sharing the resource on, on a more umbrella. And I've had some towns that are very resistant to this because mm -hmm. there are towns that don't understand, they're afraid that they're gonna give up some of their powers. Right. And for the first thing is that Cheryl and I wouldn't be sitting here if there was any chance that your board was not gonna be able to continue to make its own regulations and do its own enforcement. The, the inspector will come in to your town, will be using your town's uh, health regulations, and will come before your board of health, and and will will we'll present the findings to Todd, and then we'll take it up with the board for enforcement. So it's it's you're you're not losing out on anything when it comes to that. Um, but what I've been telling the, the, the resistant towns is think of it as a temporary agency. You, you you have a temp agency, and when you've done with that temp. Function. When you're caught up to that, whatever that is, if you hired the temp for, they don't go away. You're signed into something else. And I have a 100% record on, on convincing towns that have been resisting all of those, those little gray spots on the map. They're, they're, two months ago, there were a lot more gray spots. And the, that's the one line I'm told by every, every board of health and every board of select and every mayor and every town manager that I talk to say, you got me on the temp agency mm -hmm. because you can all relate to the fact that we all need some help from time to time. So that's okay. Thank you. Uh, and uh, actually, just one last question. Um, when it comes to data collection and, and grading of these establishments, uh, Manhattan and this, the boroughs have a great system, uh, A through F or whatever. I, th I think it's F. Um, and, and an A standard in, in one borough is the same as an A standard in another. And is that something that will happen with once we get the data collection going? And yeah, actually, it, with this particular group, we tried we tried doing that in Framingham. Yeah, and and because we have four hundred and eighty five restaurants. Wow. And what what prevented us from being able to do that was the fact that. You might have somebody who's softer on this item than that. So with the workforce development training programs that they're going to get, every inspector in Massachusetts will have the same minimum standards that they're all going to be enforcing. And at that point, you could actually go to a statewide A through D. It, well, that's why I was wondering. New York City, it doesn't matter. Right. New York City, if you see a C today and come back next week, that's that's now a she's for us. Yep. Because right. You, well, that's in Boston too. Yeah. Yep. Very true. Yes. So it would be statewide, not the local group wide. Well, it could be. You okay. could start it here. You could yep. start it. You could, that's totally. That's again. That's the beauty of why Cheryl and I are sitting here. Is where no one's telling your board of health they can and can't do that. Okay. But what to, to further on what you're saying is what what you could now that what we will have. We always we have an, a standard inspection report for restaurants. One exists. The problem has been that it isn't being filled out the same way in other municipalities, and sometimes it's not even it's not submitted. What the public health excellence grants in the budget, um, the line item that Mike mentioned, what that will everyone will be given the same system, the same data collection system. It's basically a software program where everything is uniform. Every there will be space for others where you whatever you need to write, but you will be collecting Titan collects the same data that Stone does. Okay. And that's gonna lend itself more easily to having a grading system. A grading system without a, a uniform system of collecting the data right uh, where I worked at one time we had the same quality control uh, in California that we'd have here in Massachusetts and uh, 
So they were all not judged, but I hate that word, but the criteria being the same, either you fail or you pass, but the criteria was if the cold food is supposed to be 40 degrees, then that's where it was everywhere, regardless of exactly. what the local, it was all by individual states. But that's, that's the, we, we adopted the federal food code. Federal. And then we, we amended it up. We're still a little behind in Massachusetts, but we have a state food code. Everything right. is uh, we always would say uh, there were local requirements, but whatever this was the more stringent is what we would would you use. I didn't mean to take up so much time. No, that. no, because I have many more questions. Okay. <laughs> um, first question, what is the timetable for hiring a coordinator for the health excellence grant? It's a particular grant. Oh, that'll it's going up a little bit because the town of North, North Attleboro, which is the home community, uh, had to have a review by the by the town council. And the firm that was representing them was very backed up. And a lot of it, it's, you know, it, it backed up. All of the public health people were backed up. And it's, it's probably driven by the demands of this grant. I mean, it's, it's, it's insane what's going on. So we waited for them. We got their, we got their uh, approval on the job posting last week. And uh, according to the to the regulations in place in North Attleboro, they have to post in three places. And those postings are, I don't know if they've been made or yeah. they're being made. I don't know, I'm just looking around with the economy. Okay, but she was, she was planning on doing it before this week's meeting, which is tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Yes, so, so probably as we sit here, they're, they're posted. What I had recommended was to leave the posting up for a couple of weeks and see what happens. Um, I also have uh, a couple of other recommendations that I'll make to, to your group tomorrow at the meeting. One is uh, that there are a couple of agencies, one of which is the same, the same uh, consulting firm that's doing the whole capacity assessment as a little wing of people that they're hiring to do the grant uh, the shared service coordinating work. So your shared services coordinator the answer, the long answer is probably within within a month. Uh, and that brings me to, to my ask of you, which is that the way that the capacity assessment is rolling, everything's been delayed. Each each of the two deadlines were each delayed one week and two deadlines so far. So they're two weeks behind. The third one is, I think, is going to be is going to be delayed too. But I think that all of the data for the capacity assessment is going to be in the hands of the the consulting company uh, within the next, I would say, thirty to forty five days. They'll have everything in hand. Let them. My ask of you is, let them do their work. Let them come back and suggest what it is that you need from a very objective, highly professional. Uh, uh, 30,000 foot view down. Let them tell you this is what your town needs for, for uh, to, to, to shore up its, its, its board of health functions. And then see what the grant program is willing to purchase for you. And then whatever grant minus what you need, that's, that's what you should be looking at for your own internal. I know you have a, you set a Christmas deadline for, for your grant. Uh, and what I would ask is, uh, I think that by Christmas, there's, there's a chance we're going to know what the results are, but it's not a huge chance. But I would say that by the second week of January, we're really going to know exactly what the needs, what the uh, capacity assessment is going to be revealed. It has to be done because we have to. There, we have so many other groups that want to start hiring, and, they, and the budgets all budgeted so that we can start hiring in January one. Uh, so for this, for this year's fiscal budget, everybody's planning on making those hires. And I, and I think from my reading of the Department of Public Health, with their office of local and regional health, I, I think that that office is, well, I know that they're very cognizant of that, of that date. So if you, if you could flex maybe two to three weeks, I think that you're gonna, you won't be, you won't be shooting in the dark saying this is what we need to do. You'll have somebody helping you to tell you this is this is objectively on paper. This is what your what your whole area needs. 
This is what we can give you. And then, then you know what you have to do. What is the target date for the implementation of the excellence grant? You're going to be hiring a coordinator within a month. Yeah. When is it going to start rolling? Uh, it's it's going to be as fast as you can hire at that point. Now there are some issues in hiring because we have we have 50 grants. We have from my count we have around 45 public health nurses that are going to get hired by those 50 grant groups. We have probably 50 something inspectors that are going to get hired. And when I say inspectors, some will be food, some will be housing, some will be just general health inspectors. Uh, you're going to have a whole bunch of community health workers and, and community health educators and things of that sort. Uh, so it, this is, it's going to be a supply and demand issue at some point. It's, it's going to be everybody competing for the same. So this isn't happening before January. You're not going to, you'll, you'll have your shared services put in before January, but you won't, you won't, you won't be in a position to hire anybody. Okay. So it's going to be a while before those services coming back to the town of Dayton. I would say, I really feel the so you'll have you'll be getting those services by February. I think the hiring goal is the first thing you'll be so I can, so I can so make capacity assessments are really going to help like further inform what type of inspector we really need to hire as well. Yes, correct. So like one, so yeah, but there is a sequencing here where one part of what's happening now does really will probably actually inform the next part of the process. This is, this is the truest example of don't be afraid to admit you that you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. Because we don't know, nobody in this room knows what that capacity assessment is going to mm -hmm. show for Dighton or for the infinite North Admiral group. Uh, and, and it may be something that we're not even thinking about in this room, that, that the state's going to say, this would help you tremendously. Thank you. Um, Mr. Lewis. Regarding the APA funding, the two hundred million dollars, mm -hmm. what this grant is for a nine-year program? Is that two hundred million one year, or just for nine for four years? That will all be spent in four years. So everything that's on there will be determined, implemented, bought, and paid for. It. And that is just for the six schools, or for the whole state? That's for I mean six towns, sorry, six towns. The whole everybody. The whole, the whole state. state. The grant program, the, the shared services will go on. But this is this is to buy you everything you need to make that now the app of funding is that for this coalition of six or can individual towns? It'll be, it'll be to the group of six. All the data will be collected from the capacity assessment for the six. It'll be for the group of six. If one town has a glaring need, I think at that point, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, the, the resources would be spent on fixing whatever the right. glaring need is. Right. And how will that be determining glaring need? Uh, the state through the capacity assessment. The state through the capacity assessment. So it'll be the state, not the members of those six communities. The state would only. They're, they're not going to force anyone to do anything that's not DPH's rule, except for the workforce standards. Those are going to be codified. So, who determines the need? If you're saying it's not the state, well, the, would the six community? Based on the statutory and regulatory obligations, those are already set. If those are done. There's nothing. What, what the state will be doing is comparing what a municipality is able to accomplish with what they have to accomplish pursuant to the law. So that's where they're not going to be creating anything new. They're going to use the statutory and regulatory obligations that are in existence, the laws that already need to be enforced. Right, but my question is the allocation to a specific town for a specific need how is that determined? It would go through the 
collaborative. Would, it's about six times. Would do that. It wouldn't go. And that was that was a real concern that we all had. We didn't want this money to just be divided up and sent to cities and towns, like what's happening with some of the opioid settlement right. money. That you know they divide it and send it, and then who knows where it ends up going. Right. That's why we wanted it to go through a public health entity, which is the these collaboratives that are being built. Okay, thank you. During your presentation, there was some general conclusions made about the Board of Health indictment. And I was just curious where that data came from. Has all the data been submitted by the Dighton Board of Health about the needs and concerns? You're referring to phase one, I'm assuming? Yes. Yeah, that was submitted a couple of weeks ago. Yes. But I think yeah. you're asking a different question. Right. I've right. been before this board yes. this summer to discuss some of these issues. And I don't know if you've been before no. that, but I was here and we talked about a lot of these issues. Okay. Prior. Mr. Pilling, could I get a copy of that report that you submitted to the state? I don't know if I can print that out. I don't think it's it was online, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, I had a hard copy. I threw it away. I printed all the data. And, and one of the I had, I had mentioned in my presentation thing about the band aid. And one of the things that, that that kept Cheryl and I awake was the fact that we're asking boards of health and their staff to be incredibly honest, which could open them up to some. Criticism in the community and some some uh, unwarranted intrusion, and uh, so what we had asked the state to do was to set up a system so that uh, so that when Todd entered this stuff in the computer, he was on basically a Google Doc. I think it's actually a survey one. And so the other end, the receiving end of that, is a company called BME Strategies, which is this 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 consulting company I've talked about. And BME Strategies is not a state agency. They're not a governmental agency. So, and, and it's not in his computer. It's not stored in his computer. And so there's no public record that's accessible by the public. It goes from his computer into a central database. They will crunch all of the numbers before anything gets in the hands of EPH. EPH doesn't get to see anything until just before we all get to see it. And in that way, if there's no public records requests that say there are towns, I don't know how it is indicted, but there are towns where there are people committed to making the town government look as bad as they can. And it's on social media, and we're trying to protect those attacks. But to your, to your point, there's no reason why your health director can't share the information with you. Because and that's really important, and I'll and I'll tell you why. One, as you're well aware, we're reorganizing the board of health. It's more than just the job description of the board of health agent. We're reorganizing the board of health. Secondly, one of those positions that we are looking at will soon be entering in contract negotiations with a union, which not, not necessarily work on the same timeline as that report. We also have budget concerns that January, we're going to really in earnest get into. And I understand the concerns regarding criticism but I need the Board of Health to, look, to state to us emphatically where we're wait, while we're waiting for this report of what your needs are so that we can plan a budget accordingly or provide other resources. Now, I've heard something today that I'm a little troubled with that there is no additional OPA monies that Dighton specifically can't apply for. They were working within the group. 
I see tr tremendous advantages of this partnership. You know, one of the things just in the sheer savings in administrative costs of our people, paperwork, the fringe that we won't have to pay because someone else will be coming in and helping. Um, but just coordinating it so that the picture that we get when we make decisions about budget is in a, done in a timely fashion. So we're not waiting another year to provide services to the taxpayers. So that's my concern. Yeah, and, and, and I don't know if this helps or not. One of the requirements of this program, of this grant, is that municipalities cannot use it to supplement, to, to yeah, to supplement, well, they can use it to supplement, they can't substitute right. okay. um, the money that you're currently spending right. on your health. That's, that's this would be additional funds that, that would come in to the municipality. I just have two more questions. You spoke about stormwater, and that was a big help. On the issue, traditionally across the state, does the Board of Health handle transfer stations? Oh, they do as well. Yes, um, and, it, and it depends. I know in the town that I live in, they collect the transportation transfer station fees. Um, they work in collaboration with the Department of Public Works. Okay. The arrangement ends up, it depends upon the communication level between the uh, DPW and the Board of Health or the Health Department. But it, in most cases, it's a shared arrangement. Okay, which we have. Yeah, good. Uh, last question is a simple one. Could we get a copy of your presentation? Uh, PowerPoint? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. no, I have it as well. I think you know me. Yeah, I have a potential motion that I'll need input from the board members before I do this. It is not on the agenda for public input. However, I have no problem with it if the other members don't. Yes. With that being said, I'll entertain a motion to allow public input. I'll make that motion. And second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hollis and I. So yeah, like the only recommendation I have, the sense it is actually like a joint meeting between the selectmen and the Board of Health, like it might be prudent to ask to have the Board of Health members ask questions, make comments before we open up the public. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think I'm fine. That's what I think it'd be cool. <laughs> With that being said, um, does the Board of Health have any objections to public input? I don't think it's now we don't. Board of Health does not. Mr. Aguiar, please, well, go ahead. This is, this is the reminder I have sworn agent for the Board of Health and someone that can qualify to ask a question. Chairman, well, thank you for asking me not the question. That's the point I wanted to make. So I appreciate you bringing that to light. Um, the question I have is, Specific to the workforce, you mentioned, I think, 45 public health nurses. So, how do the groups intend to come up with a workforce when there's such a shortage of people out there? And I think I know your answer, which, which raises a lot of questions. So, there really is no. The, the answer is that a lot of the groups right now have been in the business for a while. Uh, have been advertising schools and have been with a bunch of recent graduates who want to get graduated class. Not just in uh, not just in the area of nursing, but also uh, some of the groups actually went to the community colleges or to their to their local colleges 
Uh, and look for the two right there, and we can really help with that. But I think it's the same. I think it's the same. A lot of, I know there's a number of kids from Jennifer Brandt's from University of Massachusetts in their hospital and management program that have been swooped up in the future. So it's a matter of really using your resources going out there and feeding the future. It's going to be. There are these issues. But it's safe to say that current employment was But there is some limits. You can't, it's, there are issues that can come up. Uh, uh, we, we have an issue in one in one collaborative where there's an existing town nurse who wants to become the shared services nurse. And ethical questions that came out of that were what happens when you're in New York? So I guess those are some obvious issues, but those can be working. Yeah, and that's also with if it's to flow. Right. Uh, you know, this is all about the competition. Mm -hmm. so, so the concern that, that I have, especially with a uh, one of health indictment, which has the staffing that it does, which obviously is creating a problem, is that if we now potentially could lose staff members to the collaborative. Understanding that we'll be able to pull from a collaborative, but it also leaves a gap in our board that now needs to be filled. Yep. So, or, or department, I should say. Right. So that that's a concern that I have because I I do think this is a workforce problem, and I do think you're going to have find the hard press to fill all these spots without tapping into some of the existing board of health employees that we have statewide. So that would be my other point. Well, thank you. Thank you. So I guess so. So, uh, like you talked about the timeline with the capacity assessment, like right? and how the capacity assessment is really aimed at informing. Uh, oh, yeah, like helping really with that problem that we're facing. I mean, in the meantime, we're facing an issue. Oh, you know that is really. Oh, you know the. So so yeah, the responses from the general, uh, the general operating structure that we have right now today. Oh, it's impacting, you know, the delivery of oh, you know, good services and programs to get to residents as well. And all the oh, I mean, that's what really drives us the other thing, even if there wasn't uh the PG grant or the blueprint, we would have been here anyways. Um so I mean, oh, you know, and over the last probably a few months, oh, you know, like you mentioned, like you uh, oh, you know, if you've been watching like that past so so like the past few meetings as well, I really get a sense. So yeah, kind of a who we are, what our challenges were, and so forth. Oh, uh, you know, so we, so we've been, so I like, kind of like having discussions about, oh, uh, you know, oh, uh, you know, based on all the roles and responsibilities that are required in terms of what I'm doing. Oh, uh, you know, kind of, are there, are there any things we can, so frankly, uh, are there anything we do now that we can really structure a fees and program equivalent so we might be able to sub out? Oh, you know, while like controlling accountability and management. Oh, you know, like a whole host of other things because right now we get so, so yeah, so there is a service impact for residents. Oh, uh, you know, based on, I guess, what you have seen, what you uh, heard uh, uh, from uh, some of the meeting. Oh, you know, that you uh, came to us in the dogs. Are there any, so like, are there any things that you, I guess, so I uh, have come to see or understood that you view as more kind of low hanging fruit? Oh, you know, so yeah, really to help us in the interim while we're waiting. Oh, you know, like all these bigger pieces, but oh, you know, that's. Oh, that still help us really solve the issues of facing. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Um, you know, we've got two issues here. Yes. One is the public health excellence. Yes. That's an addition to what the public health does. Yeah. And I see what you're saying. I don't know the ins and outs of your health. Mm -hmm. you know, I've been here twice, but yeah. I don't know, mm -hmm. you know what, what you're comfortable doing and what you, you don't do. I know that there's a lot of paperwork and there's a lot of mm -hmm. backlog. I know that. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't see why you can't. So the public health excellence isn't going isn't gonna to fix all of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I really yeah, yes. Because yep. it's not big enough yep. now um, to do that. 
eventually, I think we'll see a system that's more where we're going to have more shared services and more money mm -hmm. um, put in from the state, but we're not there yet. So you do need to look at, mm -hmm. as it does every town, and, yep. and as Mike said, you know, the timing really, the timing couldn't be better when it comes to you're going to get some assistance yep. from the public. Yeah, but the timing really doesn't matter mm -hmm. when you're looking yes. at yep. what restructuring the Board of Health. So I think what you're asking is, do we have any sort of models or do we have any ideas mm -hmm. on how you could, number one, uh, increase payments that could mm -hmm. potentially um, lead to a revolving fund being set up in um, indictment so that the money would go back to the Board of Health? That would be mm -hmm. one idea where some more resources in that will assist with some of the hiring. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other ways of raising revenue, you know, it's, it's difficult to think of ways of raising revenue other than, um, and again, you know, you can't tax, you can't use the fee, that's the case of what you're actually doing. But when you look at a fee and you figure out what it actually costs, Whatever that, whether it's a food service permit or you know, whatever it is, um, you know, you need to include things like the, the electric bill, the copies, the, the fee can include everything that is encompassed in what it costs to actually issue that permit and do the inspections. Um, another fee that some people have would be a reinspection fee. I don't know if Dighton has that or not, they do, you do. Um, and then, you know, you, I, I see, I know that you're considering different options, and I think you can consider that with or without the public health yes. excellence. Oh, right, yes. That, that, that this exercise you're doing is valuable. You know, we're just looking at the public health excellence grants as a way of assisting on the top mm -hmm. of whatever the infrastructure. And I know the infrastructure, you can only afford what you can afford. Um, but I do think that the line item will eventually, what we're hoping is that line item will eventually really play into the delivery of services that that needs, however they end up getting delivered. But you know, I know you, you need more, you need more bodies, I think, is one thing that you need. Yeah. And you also need some sort of uh, administrative structure that makes sense. So that you don't have, you know, all this paperwork that's not mm -hmm. being addressed. You know, and, and some of that may be people, some of that may be software programs. Um, some of it may be looking at other municipalities that are similar right, in, in size and in budgets, talking to the to either the health director, the town manager, whatever, to see what else exists out there. That, what kind of structures? Yeah. yeah, what kind of structures um, other municipalities that look like you um, are using and see if any of that, because you don't need to reinvent the no, wheel. No. There are some that might, I, I don't know, mm -hmm. that might um, be working in a way that you might want to use it. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. not terribly helpful, but no, it, <laughs> some things. You know, it, to have both of you come here today, totally unaware of the politics, totally unaware of the, the issues that we're dealing with, because you said the report hasn't been completed yet. And to hear, you know, your observations is really helpful. Oh, I'm glad. Because we try to be objective. It's not always easy no. to hear people who your stature come up and make recommendations are taken real seriously. Thank you. And that, that's our job. That's a huge problem. Yes. Yeah, it really is. So, you, I mean, I can look, or you guys can, you may know from your colleagues who are in our, or cities and towns that are similar, of similar size. That, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's not a problem. <laughs> I do have a point well taken though. Mr. Machico. Yes, I have one question. 
I asked the group about what things can be ethical and not ethical. We should talk about it. Is anybody <laughs> in contact with the ethics committee currently? Yeah. Actually, I'm going to get. I think we said that. I I I talk about. I think I think we have a channel to get through the question. I mean, all of us do. But I I will say that the Massachusetts Health Board is the Sometime in November, we're setting a date right now. We're going to be doing a, uh, a 90 minute to two hour Zoom presentation on ethics. Um, and it's going to have a lot of reference to the public health excellence program. Uh, and uh, it's open not just to board of health members, it's open to everybody. It's, it's going to be very helpful for everybody, especially and it'll be timely for what you're trying to do. It's you're, you're looking at December. Hopefully, maybe a little bit of January, but uh, we're going to be doing this in November, so there might be a lot of yeah. And, and, and there is a lot of interest across the state of looking at some of your part-time employees that may want to, you know, go up to full-time by being involved mm -hmm. in the public health assistance grant. And those that brings up union issues, it brings up conflict of interest issues, it brings up a lot of issues. That we're working through uh, with the state of ethics, actually. And my big word is disclosed. It's disclosed and allowed. It usually is fine. But that's with my that's right. Yeah. That was actually that interesting. That was one of the first things. The way I asked the question for one of the boards of the State Ethics Commission, my contact there said to me, well, you just asked the same question. Yeah, asked the question in the same way that most people off the street would. You want to rephrase it? <laughs> uh, and 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 the reason for that is that there's so many things that if you say is that unethical, the answer could be nine times out of ten could be yes, it's unethical. But the next question should be is there is there a workaround for it? And just as frequently, there's a workaround. Something as easy as what Daryl mentioned, mere disclosure. Uh, and and that's that's how it's going to be handled. With some of the groups, I already know in some of the groups that one of the towns won't vote in favor of that, so it's not going to work. But if, if you have unanimity among your towns and your group uh, on, on a particular hire, a lot can be accomplished with just the disclosure. So, you like, know, that, like, I mean, we're so what, I mean, we're 10, 11 months in uh, with the North Alabama group, but I mean, one of the things I'm really proud about, so like, we're probably the so yeah, like we're in, so we're in a group with two other really small towns between Berkeley and Holbrook. But I mean, we as Dutton, so like in the group, we're actually like a leader in the group in terms of, so like in terms of really the capacity, uh, like in the impact I think we have on the group where we're, so like we're having the same, so so we're having the same type of group, uh, the same voice data balls and the data balls as well. And I mean, so like everyone's really on, so like, I mean, so like I know it's like a small town, we're always worried about really getting overshadowed by the bigger players. So like in, so like we're on like a level playing field. I, I will share on your behalf. I hope you don't get upset about me saying this, but early on, Mike stood his ground for Dighton in one of our initial meetings, saying that's not going to apply with that. We want to do it. Everybody gets the same vote, the same voice, the same, and and we push for that. Cheryl and I, when we meet with these groups, we always push unanimity. But Michael was, he was right there, making very, very clear about the fact that Dayton has the same voice that Adam has. That's excellent because that's how the community feels as well. Absolutely. You got a good one. Thank you. Oh, yes. yeah. One of the things that, one of the things that we have heard loud and clear from the Baker administration, and I hope it will continue whoever gets elected governor, is the need for regional agreements and not just Board of Health in many areas. So I think a lot of it's gonna, I think a lot of eyes have been missed over, Chairman, because I think that uh, uh, everybody knows this is happening. Every town, we have 350, the 30, you know, at this point, there, there are 300, I'm sorry, 310 of the 351 that are participating. So everybody's watching this. And, and I think that from what I've seen, the, the, the round four and those little gray dots that are still out there, they're still out there because they don't want to give up their home rule. Right. 
Yeah. And, and there is a workaround. And once once they're convinced that they're not going to be losing their whole world, that's when those those dots become blue one after another. And Mr. Mullins' advocacy speaks highly of, of that very question. Yes. yes. Mr. Mullins, thank you for hearing the will of the people. You're fighting you know, for them. Mrs. Gula. I'm sitting here listening to this as an outsider who's been on the inside. We want to select them to want to tell. What are the selling points to providing them with what is the enormous trickle of that? And uh, how much uh, responsibility and following to what have helped do this? Back in the day when we were in the the board of select and board of health, we had a number of services that were in effect contracted. We had an engineer review septic plans and mock them up. And if I was chairman of the board of health, I relied on him. I couldn't read a septic plan to know that it was done right. But when I got it from him, I would read all his notes. And his final comment was good to go, but I signed it. If it had other comments, I would talk to the gentleman we had, it was a different person. We used to go out and watch um, as told to be a dog or inspect some Title V installations, things like that. How the selling point when we split the boys was that we could bring those jobs in house. So I would think as part of looking at uh, what we're trying to do, we should also be looking at possibly returning some of those services to the outside. There were certainly engineers around that would look at septic plans. You pay for buying the plan. The other one we had was actually an employee of Mass DOT. And I'm not saying get him again. He was, but he was great. Um, the term reorganize the Board of Health is not what you're doing. The Board of Health is a three member board by town meeting vote appointed by the Board of Selectmen. Their duties and responsibilities are spelled out statutorily. What you're trying to do is reorganize the department that is under the board of health. And what I mean by that is you might have different players who are actually members of the board, but their duties and responsibilities, they're spelled out as statutory, right? They're the connection uh, agencies that boards of health report. It is the operation within that department that you are trying to reorganize. That's why I mentioned years ago we had contracted services. It's, it really needs to be passed out, separated, and looked at what are the jobs that have to be done in house? What are the jobs that might come through this regionalization you're talking about? How should we be looking at? Like, do we want to have an engineer engineering for the septic plants like before? Obviously, that how farming out that work was done for years and years because there wasn't a selectman who was a member of the board of health that could read septic plans and say, Yeah, this is great, sign on. Oh, no, no. I had full confidence in the gentleman that would send the notice to me and say, If he told me it was okay to sign, I signed. If this note said no, it didn't get signed. It went back to the individual to do the having the septic work done. The other thing, too, is there are certain jobs and duties that fall under who are held that at times you say, really? Does that really belong there? But when you look at things regionally, you find out, yeah, it does happen that way. It's, it's, it's uh, I can remember, I, I can remember the first threats of pandemics. I can remember going to a Board of Health meeting, training session that was put on the, uh, by the Department of Public Health. Dr. Di Maria was there, he was the keynote speaker. Uh, Brett and I went to that, it was holiday in time. Uh, we had regional meetings when we thought we were gonna have uh, swine flu and uh, all those other ones that have letters and numbers in their titles. Uh, and, and it was done on a regional basis. Uh, thank God none of those came along. But by the same token, when COVID came along, uh, I would say the uh, groundwork had been laid and then all of a sudden we're faced with, it's here, this is no more, it might come. And, and, and fortunately, uh, most of us got through all of that. 
But getting back to the Board of Health, you really need to look at the work that should be done, must be done in house. The qualifications and strength of the people you have in that department now match the necessary duties to the strength and qualifications of the people you have. See what can be done, whether it's on a regional basis or some other way. But the whole thing is, just like any department, uh, Sixth Street department, um, what's it, six to seven employees under a department head. And although the Board of Health work is not as structured as that, meaning they have daily schedules, their department head tells them where they're going to be in town that day, what they're going to be doing, and all that. But by the same token, the necessary stuff that has to be done, it's got to be done that way. And then look at the stuff that we can do regionally. Maybe we should look at finding some of this out. Maybe we can uh, have a joint um, position with pick a town. All right. But as I said, I'm sitting there listening to this as an outsider, but I can also sit on that side of the table and remember the situations we had and try to put myself on that side of the table, bring it together. So I'm just suggesting you're not, you're not truly reorganizing the Board of Health. It's the department under which it serves that all of those employees did all of that work. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any further questions? Um, I just want for a general mic certification. I'm a professional engineer. That's my background. So when you talk about some of this and Thank you. just you know where I'm coming from. You're that. Okay. <laughs> With that being said, I'm going to move on to the next. And I want to thank both for coming tonight to that. help us. Oh, it was a big help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, really? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Next on the agenda is business review, discuss maybe act on the proposed restructure plan um, or take any input from members of Board of Selectmen. I'd like to ask Mr. Mullen for his input. So um, um, the two options are the options that have been proposed specifically um, by the Board of Health um, that we uh, generally uh, begin doing at uh, I'm at the last meeting. Um, I, I'm not, so just in terms of the, uh, the structure, uh, what was mentioned uh, tonight, as well as like a path forward, I mean, one of the things, oh, well, you know, like at this, so I mean, like at this point, oh, uh, you know, like if, uh, uh, if the boards, I guess, have any feedback to what has, um, has been proposed by the Board of Health together with what we heard earlier. Oh, uh, you know, in terms of the direction uh, that we might uh, want to start uh, actually exploring and going down. Uh, like I know one of the recommendations really tonight, um, uh, uh, you know, from MHB was actually like looking, just uh, reaching out and seeing what other uh, towns actually like us and they do, how uh, they handle these. Uh, how they handle the things that we uh, all have the requirement to handle. Um, uh, I do know uh, from the financial management review uh, that we went through in June, uh, one of the things that was really helpful that the, uh, that the Department of Revenue did uh, was they really broke down what we call like a benchmark pounds, uh, not only in the region, but across the state of who we really, who we really get to based on budget, based on income, based on per capita. Uh, and one of the, 
how you know, like I know just as an example, the uh, the town of uh, Shirley, uh, like was uh, I was one of those went in Lancaster. Uh, I have other examples as well. Um, and I mean, I'm just so yeah. Like, I mean, what we just heard I and mean, what a lot. I just I'm just wondering if you wanna. Oh, you know, like really like mull what we've had over, like along with what we already know is happening. Oh, you know, then I'm happy to reach out to those other uh, to those other towns that I just mentioned, uh, other towns in the region as well, uh, to see how really their structure is like, or we can like jump into it. Oh, you know, or we can, I mean, one of the things we can really start with, I mean, so it's just hearing I mean, what would be helpful. Uh, uh, what would be helpful uh, uh, to me in helping to guide the project forward? Oh, uh, I guess uh, all together is really, really to begin hearing uh, uh, the reactions and discussions from the members of the board. So, like, add uh, really to. So, so yeah, like, thoughts are, so, like, thoughts, so, like, thoughts are this way. So, as I look to different types of communities, I know. Oh, like what really the general thoughts and responses of the boards are right you now. So uh, I hope I answered your question, but I mean, we could really go yeah. uh, in like a multitude of areas and directions at this point that I really want to uh, have. I uh, have everyone really provide a consensus on it. Thank you. One of the things that was asked of the Board of Health for this meeting was a presentation on the other jobs and responsibilities under chapter 111 that the um, health agent does. And I was wondering if you had that. I don't. It's not the expanded every duty. It's bullet point that we can expand upon. Not those not just the 111 duties, that's just everything that falls under the specific category. Um, in, in looking at this, bond permits, that applies to the facility, not what's in it, correct? If somebody wants to have animals, they, if, if the, the facility has to be inspected. Right, but you're looking, and it's, aren't you looking at two different things? I mean, one, you're looking at animals, you know, what's good for the, but you're also looking at the structure. Yeah, they want to make sure it's adequate for the animals. Right, but isn't that something that is co-departmental? I mean, that's not only animal control, but building under either the commission's capacity or as an agent of the Board of Health? Sad, yeah. Yes, currently, the, I do not accompany the inspector, animal inspector on every bar inspection. Right now, if uh, the animal inspector sees something, like a deficiency in the building or something that rises to a level that I should be involved, then I'm notified. Otherwise, to answer your question, typically if the barn was built under within the last 12 years, I would issue a permit, inspect it uh, accordingly. So there is a collaborative, but it doesn't happen on every occasion. Do you do that as a building commissioner or part of the Board of Health? No, as a building official. Thank you. Um, stable permits, who grants those? Again, our office issues them, but the animal inspector goes out and does all the inspections for both the barn and the stable. We just process all the paperwork. Who does the state Recommend do it. Issue the permit. Oh, oh. So yeah, like I just want to jump in. So the so like under chapter one twenty nine is the animal inspector. The animal 
how the animal inspector has at the bottom book, which actually she reports back uh, everything in uh, in the bottom book to the Department of Agriculture Research. Uh, we indicted, we have two local processes um, in terms of the bond permits and the stable permits. Those are processes that have been created under the Board of Health. So, our, our, so those processes aren't like, those processes are local response. Those processes are local responsibilities that don't, and they don't actually have the, like a statutory requirement. Uh, that, the Board of Health has actually created those processes. Now, as we look at restructuring, they don't necessarily have to continue. You're exactly right, yes. Okay. But we would have to vote to stop doing those permits. Like, we, we could just, we would have to end it, because right now it's, it is in place, and we would have to do Okay. The question becomes also, um, We'd have to, if we were going to have that discussion, we'd have to have that discussion with Ms. with the animal control officer, since it would be add additional response, potentially add additional responsibility. Yes. So one thing, and I actually, oh, you know, in the discussion here, in my opinion, I mean, it could go either way. Oh, uh, we, uh, so we as town officials, we could, uh, we could trust what. Uh, you know, like as we should, but what's in the bottom book can be important to DPA. I mean, I'm sorry, the Department of Agriculture Resources. Um, uh, based on the very broad, also, however, based on the very broad responsibilities of the Board of Health, or, you know, like in the sanitary code and other things, uh, we might have good reason to want to keep that process under the Board of Health. So if there is an issue and there's a permit issue, and then we as a town have the ability along with along with the animal inspector and her our and her recommendation and partnership and collaboration, uh, that does really give us through the permit the, the ability to respond to something uh, through the water health and permit that we might uh, otherwise not. Our uh, entire things have been able to actually do it. So it might apply to school. Oh, you know, if we are uh, if we think that school is valuable, is what I'm saying. The, the rabies clinic, is that the animal control officer working with the Board of Health, or is that animal inspector? The animal inspector. So we do all the setup, all the public outreach, and all the arrangement, but she works it, we don't work it. Town Clark has to be there, um, and the animal inspector has to be there. Does the Board of Health provide any materials for them? Um, not about materials. They don't have much okay. materials. We do all the flyers and all the things, social media postings and that kind of stuff. And then the inspections are done by the animal control. It's inspection. It's just two hours up at the transfer station you know, with, for the animal, um, uh -huh. but one hour. And people come in with their animals and they get their shots by a veterinarian that comes in for the day. Dr. Bruce's office works with us. Okay. Now, who arranges Dr. Bruce? Uh, Bru uh, you? The office. Okay. So we coordinate the town clerk, Dr. Bruce, and the animal inspector to make sure that they're all available at date and time for everyone involved. What the fees are. Before I move on to animal, well, uh, move on to emergency prep. Does Mr. Pacheco and Mr. Karen have any questions about those specific areas that are in gray? No. So I do have a question. So, if, like the bond permits and the stable permits, if that was taken away from you, then the animal inspector would be issuing those, or who well, would be issuing? If, if the regulations are under the Board of Health, I guess we would have to somehow change it to say that the animal inspector would be the one issuing them and then all the paperwork then would be moved over there or we would just get rid of the regs and then somebody else would have to promulgate regs to say that it was being done by them. I would assume we want to keep the permits. It would just be a matter of who's doing the paperwork. And I know that the Agricultural Commission that uh, Barbara is, uh, is on, they're coming up with some regulations for livestock. Uh, 
Okay. Didn't know that, that. That will go to the Board of Health for approval. If we take this out, will that change then? It won't go to the Board of Health. It'll still go to the Board of Health. Yeah. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Mr. Aguilar. I just think that before you can make these decisions, we need to make sure statutorily that there isn't language already at the state level that requires things to move a, move a certain way. So I hear a lot, well, what a health is this, what a health is that. Statutorily, what a health might have some oversight over the animal inspector. I know there's been a lot of talk about separating that, but you better make sure that statutorily that's allowed to happen before you make those decisions. Point well taken. Up a while with, like I said, we just had a presentation listening to the money that's going to come in to help up staff. If we put the responsibility into another department, what's going to help that department carry the burden? We are, we're going to have the extra people to carry the burden. And like I said, we're going to be in house instead of spreading responsibilities to different departments that aren't going to get help. No, no, I, I I hear what you're saying, and what we heard this evening in regards to the report coming out in January, I, I think it would be wise for the board to just gather information before we make any decision or any final vote. Yeah, well, so we'll make any decisions to just get reorganized, see what help we can get, what kind of branch we can get. Right. Um, unless there are any other questions about animal welfare, take a look at emergency prep. What is AHAN, H HAN? Uh, that's the Health and Homeland Alert Network. So now you manage that, correct? We both do. The office does, yes. Well, this is how it also helps. Yes, actually. And that would be the Web EOC and um, the coalition meetings, regional meetings. So you attend it, those. I'm right? sorry. I'm, what does it stand for? Health and Homeland Alert Network. So when there's a positive mosquito in Berkeley or Tripoli or West Nile, we would get a call. They give us a weekly call to update whether it's a moderate or severe or a minor, like the status of our area, town, so to speak. Now that role isn't shared with the, the, the fire chief. That's exclusively the domain of the Board of Health. I don't know if they get those alerts. Okay. Okay. What is the orange binders? Oh, what are the orange binders? Well, this was done a few years ago. Every town has to have one. It's like 22 binders for basically any emergency situation. You're supposed to just grab the binder and it's supposed to tell you everything to do for that emergency. Like there's one for, say, a natural disaster like a hurricane or flood. There's another one for behavioral stuff. There's, I don't know, the, I don't even know what they all are, but. Um, that's what they are. They're, they're meant to be your handbook for some type of emergency. So you edit them, make sure everyone has one, and they're up to date? No, no. There's, the office has the set of binders. So the town has the set of binders, but oh. the house in the board now. Oh, okay. And yes, we're supposed to be updating, so we'll be adding to them, um, that kind of thing. Uh, we've had an intern do it for us so less a whole few years we've had them working on it. But you know, I'm an intern right now. But we don't, yeah, but yeah, it's technically it's, it's on us to maintain them. They're woefully lacking. Inventory. Inventory of what? That would be all of our, um, we have an emergency response trailer that most of the items are in now. So we've got cots, blankets, pillows, um, megaphones, the walkie talkies, so we can, yeah. And then the elementary school, it was, it was, would it, would it get moved to? It's not the transfer station. Transfer station. And we just purchased a conic box, 
which their um, highway department is going to outfit so that we can get everything into one place, which would be great because we have some stuff stored here, some stuff downstairs, there's some stuff still at the middle school, we have the trailer. It would be great to have it all consolidated in one. We would still use the trailer so that when we needed to get the equipment from the conic box to wherever we needed to be, whether it be the shelter or you know if we were setting up the EDS, we still have the trailer so that we can move the equipment, but everything would be in one. The stuff all over the place, was that done because of lack of storage or was it done strategically in case one place got wiped out in a storm, you could go to, you know, you had another. No, lack of, lack of storage space. Um, whose budget does the supplies come out of? The emergency prep. They have their own budget which is the fire chief. Well, it is now, I guess so that's where it's, but you know, we- If we, we go that way, it, so. right. It's a, a rather small budget, 8,500, yeah. 9,500, it, it's a small- But like 2,500 or whatever year goes to pay for the program. Right? Okay. But right now you're still responsible for the items in it in its storage location. Are you also responsible to make sure it gets out or is that by a department? Well, we are supposed to meet with Mr. Mullen and the fire chief and decide with these other responsibilities, how we're going to handle that. That hasn't been decided yet. As of right now, yes, it is still on us, but we haven't met to Fine. discuss it with the chief brother, how he wants to handle that. All down drills. And we haven't done one of those in a couple of years. That would be everyone that's on the incident command chart, which you see gentlemen who would be part of, um, Mr. Mullen would be. Uh, most of the officials in town are. And what it is, is it's, we would implement the call. It would basically, it would come out to everyone and it would just say, in the event of an emergency, could you respond to the middle school within two hours? And you either hit one for yes, you could be there within two hours or no. And then the, that's all, all those numbers are documented by the state and then they send us a report. So we know that the town could respond in the event of an emergency, who couldn't, just how good we're all working together. And we haven't done it in a couple of years, one because of COVID, and um, two, we just haven't had the time. Every time we think about doing it, we have some sort of a emergency that it, it takes a back burner. It's a posted on our desk and we need to do a call down drill, but we also need to sit down with, well, Ken, you've been part of them before. You gentlemen explain actually what it is. We haven't even, we talked to Mike a little bit about it and that we needed to move forward. And then the discussion was, well, okay, emergency prep, what are we gonna do with it? We need to take this step back a minute. We're not going to do trainings and talk to the new employees because like our, our new town treasurer, our new town county assessors, they could all need to be involved at some point depending on the emergency. So we were getting ready to sit down with them to explain what their potential roles or possible roles would be. And Mr. Mullen and um, the fire chief just said, let's figure out what we're doing with emergency preparedness and then we'll move forward. So, but that's the call down drill where it's just a phone call and you have to respond. But once a year, you're supposed to be doing the drill with the summer. Once a year? A little further up. Well, the call down drill is supposed to be quarterly. Quarter. Yeah. The drill with assembly is actually setting up at the middle school, like literally setting up like this was an emergency. The emergency. The highway department, system. like oh. everything. And everyone comes and we do a brief little presentation on what would have happened or what we would need to do. To go over their roles with everybody. And the state comes down, we um, that our emergency preparedness coordinator would come and be there and take notes and tell us kind of critique and help us. Now, the actual drill is run by a fire chief. No, it would be us. That's an EDS. That's why the stuff in white at the top we'd be keeping. That's the EDS site, and that's the EDS drill that we do on. So it's the emergency dispensing site. That's what that. So even with. So even though we ended that group, your your responsibilities didn't end. 
But again, the, the stuff at the top there that stayed in white stays with the Board of Health. And right. the stuff in gray is what we've done with the, with the fire department potentially. Hand it over to the fire department. Well, we're not sure that's why we need to sit yeah, down with the yeah. chief. Okay. Let's make sure that it, it someone is taking care of it. Because right. right now, when those aren't finders, they're lacking. Okay. Mr. Pacheco, Mr. Karen, any questions? Well, I think when we really talk about this, the five chief needs to be part of this conversation. As you yes. Mm -hmm. um, now, do we want to do that before the board, or is that something you want Board of Health and the fire chief to work with Mr. Mullen on? I guess I would like to hear the, uh, his uh, input on this. I'm not sure how soon we need to hear that. But right. I think I would want the live chief. Okay. Just as you know, when we talked about you know, the transfer station, where it sounds like we shouldn't be giving getting rid of the transfer station from them. Uh, I want to, if we want to give it to the Department of uh, Public Works, I would want uh, Tom to be here. That right. Kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. And same thing with animal welfare. Yeah. Okay. No, oh, thank you. Um. Are there any questions regarding food services? I do have a question in the, in the marijuana edibles. What's the inspection as far as that goes? Well, it's food. So it would be like a, a, food, a retail store or whatever, but it's it's different. You have to check percentages of marijuana and stuff. So. But if they're making them, like brownies and that yeah. kind of thing, if it's not medicinal, it's medicinal. It's different, but we would have to be it's just recreational. Yes, but the, uh, we'd have to inspect the kitchen if they were making. Any questions? Any further questions on who's here? I think, uh, Mr. Pacheco, the other Mr. Pacheco. Oh, yes. Hi. Uh, the animal set, has that already been divided up? The... Not officially. Not officially, it is? The, we haven't voted on it. So the police chief has assumed the responsibilities. So the so it, yeah, no, there was a very broad job description that was approved, but like there right. was a lot of them. Yeah. So like for the flexibility we're talking about right now. So currently the uh, health is on. Control the animal sector. So, um, that is one, so that is one direction we moved away from because, um, uh, technically, the uh, the accountable entity uh, that the animal inspector is actually responsible and accountable to uh, is, is the Department of Agricultural Resources. So, like, we've made it clear uh, in the updated, in the uh, updated, uh, in the updated, uh, in the updated the description of duties. Uh, that the animal inspector really uh, is nominated by the town, uh, but reports once appointed by the state, uh, that he reports to the state. Okay. Yeah, yes. I'm going to consider things highlighted here in um, consideration for the moment. The animal inspector is there, it says in consideration. Yeah, but the complaint and injury, there is some, there is some nexus between the animal inspector's duties and also the, uh, the Board of Health duties as well. And those are one of the, what's well, right, people who get animal inspectors. The dead end was actually, uh, the dead end was actually, that was one thing that was actually qualified and that would be under the, at least no actions. But a lot of the calls coming to our office. You know? Yeah, so there's a there's a re-educating as part of the process that we have to do with the community as well. Right. So like there's one on this. What's that, yeah? I know it's getting late and I know everyone wants to go, I'm sure, but I think this is extremely important. And uh, for edification purposes, I would like to know actually the amount of that it's obvious that we have a problem with servicing people in this community. And I've been very, very vocal about 
what the people in this community need. So I like to know what the current responsibility or workload is. So we're on the food services right now. How many food service inspections and permit creation per year? Um, I, I think it fairness to the Board of Health. If you could ask those questions and they'll get back to us because I don't think they have all that. No, I didn't say it wasn't relevant. I said they don't have the data to answer. I can go grab the end of the report from downstairs. It's all on the image. So what is, what is, what are we trying to figure out? We're trying to figure out whether we need to reorganize, add staff, split duties, but we really don't know what the responsibilities are or what the work is. I think it's all relevant. It is relevant. If, in regards to gathering the data, if if it's readily available, if it's in the annual report. I can, just, I can go downstairs and get it. Like. Okay. Oh, uh, no, that's whatever. I'm sure we're not going to finish this tonight. No, no, that was that was my point. What, it, what I'm what I'm trying to do, based on your early comment about um, timeliness, because quite a bit of stuff on that pertinent questions such as that be gathered and then we will decide at the end of this meeting what will be on the agenda for the next meeting. We're not taking any actions, we're gathering information. And one of the, my goals this evening in gathering that information, you'll see very shortly, is allocation of time. And, and with that being said, you know, I didn't want to get into a discussion about stormwater tonight because of the intricacies. What I was hoping, the question I was going to ask, do we make the discussion of stormwater a meeting unto itself or do we make it, put it on as an agenda, agenda item and dedicate an hour or a half hour it's good regarding the annual report i would like a copy of us maybe before the next meeting maybe if we get a copy i don't know how many the annual report you were talking about oh, the so many, they've still got hundreds of these talking about this really okay yeah, yeah. Yeah. if you could yes if you could yeah. provide yeah, some of the okay <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> There's more women. Um, the yeah, Sorry, the residential kitchens. Yes. Yeah, so if you want to uh, start selling, okay, you can pick them in your house. house I thought I'd be inspected. Be inspected. Okay. Thank you. Um, regarding stormwater, does anyone have any questions? Uh, do we, when we plan, based on what we heard this evening from Mike and Cheryl, do we want to have this as a separate item or would you want to make it, you know, how quickly do you want to next meeting or? I don't think there's any rush, but I do think it has to be a separate item. A separate? Item. Okay. So Mr. Karen's position. Uh, same thing. Yes. Um, statewide, countrywide, all water is water. Stormwater, drinking water, and wastewater. The situation we have in this town that the town does not control all of those things. And under the Board of Health, I see nothing with the drinking water per se. We have two water districts in this community that this water health is responsible. If nothing else, those districts should be reporting to the Board of Health on a regular basis because they are, as we heard tonight, they're responsible for drinking water. Fortunately, our um, public wastewater system, we have in-house the sewer department as commissioners. So that commission, should also be received as some connection to the Board of Health. Right? Stormwater is a third one, which we've already got listed there. 
uh, when I was listening to the comments tonight and what I've experienced uh, out there when I go to MMA meetings. You know, everyone's got solutions. God wanted to drink water and like, I said, wait a minute, it doesn't work at night. No, it doesn't so, at this time. Because of our structure in the town of district, these are something that have to be considered. I'm not trying to add more work to the board of health, but there is a reporting requirement there. Okay. Uh, just, just to mention that no, no. in the list. Um, should we include sewer under our discussion with Stormwater and ask one of their representatives to come? No, it should be separate. Again, whether it's statewide DEP or federal cross country EPA, we have all water is water. So right. We, tell you. we have storm water, which we've got covered. We have wastewater, which the limited amount of public wastewater we have, we have a sewer commission. And then drinking water, we have two water districts. So what I'm saying is, that wastewater, because they have a board of commissioners, their responsibility would be reporting to the board of health periodically just to let them know what's going on. Because if a pipe bursts on a later time, it's a public health issue. We got a major problem. By the same token, if something happens to one of our water districts, like the boil water, it's a public health issue. I know the water districts. So but that's a public health issue. So in looking at this, we have strong water listed. All I'm saying is probably there should be a box for a school commission wastewater and then drinking water, water districts. Only that they report to them. Right. Do you have a list of responsibilities for those other areas? Yeah, she's right. Stuff like drinking water and that kind of thing that does fall under the purview of the Board of Health. But again, the lack of information, we haven't, I haven't pursued stuff like that. Is that mandated by the state? Yeah. So, as an enforcement officer, could you? Yeah, because the PFAs are too high, I can go down there and I should be. And you have jurisdiction over them. Not amongst jurisdictions, right? Words, but um, I, I can go down there and have a talk with them. Can you shut a well down? Or I don't know. I, I, I don't know that. That's beyond my area of expertise. Yeah, but that to the so yeah to the area of the capacity assessment. Uh, can I uh, can capacity assessment number one? Oh, these are all questions on the capacity assessment. So there, so these all those areas are areas that our uh, the capacity assessment is picking up on as well. Because I think a lot of those questions, like you can consider, yes, we're doing it. No, we're not because we don't have enough staff. No, we're not because I didn't know about the regulation. I mean, you had different no's that you could answer or different questions. And some of these was I, I didn't even know I was supposed to be doing it. Okay. Would we want to discuss those separately or as part of the stormwater? I think it's a separate issue. Separate? I missed that conversation. Oh, okay. Mrs. Goulart brought up under stormwater that there were other responsibilities that the Board of Health has in water. regards to water, whether it be drinkable water a disposable water, and there are some legal responsibilities and enforcement that Mr. Pilling has, even though the board, the water department, both towns hasn't over the years worked closely with the board of health. It is in this study here, or this report here, that that's one of the responsibilities that they have is. Because, like, I know in the water district, they'll issue advisories in regards to levels. Does that come through you? Yes. Some of them come from the state also. Right, but I'm saying what they send out to the public, is it 
be viewed by you first before it goes out? Well, not before it goes out. No, I get it at the same time everybody else. Yes. Mr. Pacheco. Yes. Start with the water. Obviously, wastewater, when you try to apply it, it's like I said, some example, when you try to wastewater goes to time. But when it comes to the drinking water, there are reports that have to be sent to the state. And also, it's not the water in the it's a separate district. Only people of that district is going to that, and then the other district. And then we have here is a town that are not in any district at all. Right. So, we could send reports to the local board of health, but they're mandated to send the need requirements test them with the state of Massachusetts. They go around town, they test the water, they use the schools, the town hall, site, all the public buildings. They also work with Somerset. So, I think it's out of the scope of the local board of health to know the regulations. On the district itself, when there are dealing with state sector. Jim, as I said, I'm not going to create another workload for the Board of Health, but there is definitely a responsibility for all water. And since we were talking about water type, like under public health, we have wells. So obviously, title type systems, we get a lot of those in town. But the fact that we have a public sewer system in town, even though everything heads north, and we have two public water supplies, we don't cut up Somerset, but we have public water, and it does fall under the water and health. Only if a disaster happens, the fire rushes, and we got stuff coming up out of the ground, right? That's a, that's a public health issue. Yes, the sewer commission would be involved with the repairs and the city of town would be notified, whatever. Um, our pumping station goes down and we get backups. So, but the fact of the matter is, anything happens to the system, it creates a public health emergency, which means our public, our board of public health is going to be involved, even if they aren't hands on. But it's the that, right? I'm sorry. Yes, I think we've already determined that. Yes. My my only question is these are all state regs. They are not bylaws or policy of the town. Is that correct? So we could get the chapter to see what the specific responsibilities of the Board of Health are, correct? Okay. Um, the only other question that I have as I look at this chart is the transfer station in solid waste. I mean, unless we have questions, I, I think we're all pretty much aware of what septic responsibilities are, housing and the public health ones are issued. I mean, our list of, um, we've had some discussion in the past about who should take care of the transfer station. Um, do we want to have that be a separate meeting? Well, there is a board right now, committee, going over septic rules, not septic, I'm sorry, transfer station and solid waste. I, I, although I think we should hear from them, I think it's they're still early in their meetings to determine what exactly they're gonna, going to do, what their responsibilities are going to be. So would you want solid waste to be a part of the transfer discussions or a separate? Oh, I think it can be part of this, the same. Same? Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions about this chat? No? Not at this time. Yes. Just Mr. Aguilar. Just for future meetings so we can identify appropriately. Does the annual call also capture questions that may come up for septic, like perfection, permitting, et cetera, et cetera? Is that all quantified in the report? Okay. I think the flow top, though, um, I don't want to steal your thought about it. The flow top is really thought of. Um, although we all can grasp how it was arranged, 
the way this is written, the, the public health nurse, the animal, animal inspector, would all have all the site on all of those items listed down below. And that's not the case. So um, I just want to bear that in mind. If this is something you're actually going to vote on someday, it's not right. No, 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 no. Regarding these, these are suggested. We're not, we're not voting on the option. Um, we may change the options. We may, based on bodies taking over certain responsibilities, the float, this may, okay. yeah, okay. but we're not, correct me if I'm wrong, we're not bound by this exactly. No, we were just trying to give you right. a, a visual. Yes. Um, yeah, it, it, we're far from. I mean, one of the things that happened tonight, we we had, had set the goal of December, and we're probably going to need to have that discussion. At the time, it seemed like a realistic goal, especially when we've been discussing this since 2019. But hearing the state tonight say that their final report won't be back to us to the middle of January. We we'll need to have a discussion about the timetable. And when I say a discussion, it's both sides, not just you know how the Board of Health feels about what was said tonight. Um, Mrs. Gulak. Uh, what is the report that you're referring to? Because I'm not familiar with it. I would a lot of departments. The Department of Health. Are you doing a capacity assessment? assessment for the town of Dyke? Is, is there an initial preliminary? Is that what Ken's referring to? No. No, no they are actually soliciting data from the town now. Yes. So, so, they, can, so they can come back and identify any gaps. Based on data that exists. This is that good. Round two that they were talking about. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. there or whatever it is. Uh, the they are they are collecting data. They do not wish to share it until the report is completed and publicly released. So can I get to that, please? It was by invitation only. Yes. It went from BDH to certain public officials. Correct. I don't want anyone commenting on stormwater if I don't have a say in it. Uh, stormwater was not part of the assessment. But it's come up in discussion. Yeah, but we're talking about the Department of Public Health is doing the assessment for all 351 communities in the state. And out of 180 questions and answered, stormwater was not in any of them. Even though it's as we heard tonight. Uh, I'm just, yes, that's what I'm telling you. Okay, thank you. You took it. Are there any further questions? I. Uh, on the issue of review, discuss, and act health agent job description. Mr. Mullen. So yeah, my feeling is that this is all still a work in progress and that one thing doesn't inform the other. Yes. Um, with that being said, we've heard a lot from the Board of Selectmen. We heard this evening a recommendation of the state in regards to making any final decisions, putting those off until January, based on the fact that, you know, we had established a timeline of December. I'm very curious as to how the Board of Health feels about that. Well, Cheryl did say, keep going the way we're going, keep working on it, and whatever comes afterwards is frosting on the cake. So we still have to keep working on this. We still have to keep oh, no, no. I plan on keep working, but. Just, well, no, no, no. No, that's not true. 
I haven't made a decision on that. What I'm trying to find out is you just said that keep going. Oh, keep going can be putting together a plan and then voting on it or voting on it in stages. I think, I don't think we can vote on stages. Okay. I think we have to, it's a puzzle putting it together. Right. When we finally get to where we all agree, okay. we all can compensate, change things around, then have the puzzle together. Stages we might vote and then have to back up. Something okay. comes along. Right. Um, I, 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 I don't know how does everybody else feel. I, I wouldn't be in favor of voting for anything until we have all the information that we could possibly get. Okay. Um, but I think we should discuss certainly. Uh, oh, definitely discuss. Without stopping discuss. and not uh, to wait for yes. the state. Oh, yeah. Because they're just suggesting oh, that it's a two week delay. Yes. Okay. Wait for the state. There are certain things that we need. We need it now. And if the state comes, but we may have more things they're going to be giving us too. I mean, it it sounds like the state has big ideas for board of health in the future. So and the other thing too, just I mean, I agree with that chair lack of TV as well. Like, I mean, so like we have so in the meantime, we have things we're trying to work out and dive into. Right. So I mean, one of the things. So just like a quick look at the calendar. So, so two weeks from now. So, uh, so we're, we're keeping the Monday schedule. Um, two weeks from now is Halloween. Uh, the night after that is meeting. Uh, the Monday after that is actually the economic development forum planning. Um, so yeah, like planning event here. So, so we stick to Mondays. Uh, so hypothetically, that takes us to Monday, November 14th. It's a long way. And so, but we can dive into these other ELE like so. Um, so uh, we know we need to have animal uh the animal inspection by chief bat. Uh, we know we're gonna have one dedicated meeting to stormwater. Right. Uh, we, uh, we also, uh, based on the work of like the solid waste that committee, we need to give that committee like a little bit of time to come back with um, a recommendation and a direction in the board. So I actually think realistically, uh, the time frame we're talking about while not, so while continuing the ball forward, so like it's all is actually going to sink in well all together. I mean, I really think we should sort of keep at it. And and as we meet on those items, all these pieces are kind of like we're going to be able to decide how we want to go forward with them and get a better idea of those things as we go forward. That's just my thought. Yeah, I was just saying that if we hear from stormwater, and not we'll say stormwater, no. uh, we should decide. Yes, I agree. Yes, right. Could we meet another night beside? Monday, since we're talking about November 14th, it's quite a ways away. You know, we have off Wednesday nights. It might mean starting at six. That would be the only thing. But, or 530. What, what is the earliest? I think I'm the only one on the board that's retired, so. Mr. Cameron? Uh, six works better for me. Six o'clock? But I can do just about any night if we do six. I, I, I really want it because there's a lot to do. There is a lot. And not only is there a lot to do in regards to the job description, we also have to negotiate a contract. Mm -hmm. and, and that really can't start until we get all these pieces together. So I am hoping... You know, and then we'll probably need a meeting to digest the capacity assessment, which isn't coming out until January. So that's why if we could pick another date, you know, preferably. Well, 
the last Wednesday in, well, it'd be the first uh, Wednesday in October, uh, November the 2nd. Right. That was November 2nd. It's the day after our, I'm fine, special town meeting. That's the, the town meeting? It's the day after. Day after. That's all right. That'd be fine. I'm sorry? When is the select meeting in November? The second uh, Wednesday is now. Uh, yeah, we meet the second Wednesday. Yeah. Right. Was it the third? Actually, it's the ninth, but we changed our schedule it was 23rd just before Thanksgiving. We're not meeting somewhere. Right. For another day we're meeting. Right. I think it was just one. Yeah. Right now it's just one. Are you meeting the 26th? Next. Uh, yes. Yeah, we are. So I like the second or third. The second or third? What works best? The third doesn't work yeah, for us. We have a question on disability. Oh, okay. So the second? Second ends right now. Which for me too. We're talking at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. Well, is that one the planning? Sir? That's when it's going to be the second. Well, I don't know yet. We. Uh, oh, they're still deciding. I mean, I think we're in agreement. Like yeah. the board of health is checking. So is it the second? Okay. Um. That thing that I have before we go into the minutes. As I look at the Board of Health restructuring, here, yeah. I see the word administrative agent. And that position obviously will play a role in the restructuring of this. I'm curious how this is going to be coordinated um, in the creation of this position in light of the fact that it is also a union position. If we one of the selectmen, um, Matt Tannis, says when we were discussing my job or the office manager position, that it was um, more of an administrative agent position where I did assist the agent and did conduct in some inspections and just had um, more trainings and certifications than an office manager. He said that's more of an administrative agent. And that's why that's there. That it could be a whole different position. It could be a different title. It could be whatever the board wanted to do. That was just what was previously put out there. I have not seen a formal proposal from the board of position. I have a word, administrative agent. 
but I haven't had a piece of paper that explains. I'm trying really to define what it is. Yeah. And that comes from what is needed in the reconstruction. We don't know what's needed yet. Right. We're working on it. Well, that request was also submitted in 2019 to the Board of Selectmen and again in 20. So you have a copy of it? Well, it wasn't a full blown written proposal for what the job would entail. It was a, hey, we need to evaluate this position. It was the Board of Health. It was a request to evaluate it. And that was as far as it went. We could technically take half the responsibility away and you would still need an, an, an agent. You mean by half the responsibility? Take animal welfare, emergency prep, food services, stormwater away from the Board of Health. Oh, I'm not saying we could do that. It has anything to do with animal welfare. Yeah. No, you, I'm, not, I'm just using that as an example. Exactly. Uh, so I, I don't want to go, stormwater can't come out. Or, I mean, that's not what I'm saying. You're just saying that if we took away majority of the or some of the responsibility, you would still need an assistant agent. So the theory was that the, the workload that if it was an administrative agent to do some of my, and that would free me up to do some of the other. So if we took work away, it would free you up to do what you're saying should be an agent. It could be, yeah. That's so uh, that some of them in the beginning was either give us more staff or take some work away. So we can right, right. And again, keeping in mind, we haven't made any decisions, but Not at all. you know, you, we have everything in front of us before we make a decision. Because obviously, there is give and take. You know, some of this could be 53 G'd out, as happened in the past. I think the odds of the town of Dighton providing more staff with the current economic conditions is doubtful, but we have a lot of responsibility and a lot of work that has to be done. And we're pretty much in agreement. And also backlog work that right. put up on. Somebody's got to do it. So it's a double-edged sword. It's not just from here on we're working looking for someone to help us it's, clear up everything that has to be done. Right. It's a backlog that has to be done. Well temp service possible. could do that for us. I'm sorry. Temporary sorry. service could do that for us if it's just logging data. Well, a train. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're working on that. The other thing that regarding the administrative agent or clerk, the current position, uh, office manager, what are the rules, the HIPAA rules? Because, well, we have the designation confidential secretary. I work in the healthcare field. And I know some of the information that comes across the office manager's desk is governed by HIPAA rules. And she can't share that information with the public. It has to be very careful about its, how it's maintained and his eyes can see it. What is that? Fit into the 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 role of that person, you know. You know confidential secretaries have a different role. They also have a different fee structure because of that responsibility. Where does that fit in? So the amount of confidential information our office manager is handling would not change that person becoming an administrative agent. It's the same information coming into the office, so it's still the same amount of confidentiality that it was there before. Basically, everyone that works in the health department has to be confidential about a lot of things. Yes. But my understanding, there are three individuals who have that, and their their pays are negotiated separately. 
is mellow, correct? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's a little different with the elected two positions um, because those are stipends. The other three positions, I mean, in Ms. Mellow's case, she has a license that's on the line if she violates HIPAA. Uh, I don't know if the sanctions are the same for Mr. Pillen. But um, so, you know, with that comes responsibility. And money. So, um, how does the other members of the board feel about how presenting what they feel is their needs in that area? A formal proposal from the board regarding well i understand you submitted one once before right yes but it wasn't a it was a um it was a request to like, evaluate the goal yeah it, it, it wasn't a this is what we would want the person to do it was a matter of it was a request to be evaluated so that was just the present not future needs yeah, it was the present at that time. I certainly like to see something like that, but also future needs too. Mr. Hull, do you want a job description? No. I, I was like, proposing. It, it, yeah. I think this board completed one once before. They submitted it to the Board of Selectmen, correct? So you have an idea of what that entailed. Well, it was the previous board. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, you, you came up with the idea of an administrative agent that I believe was the Board of Health term. So they must have a vision of what they would like to see that role be. That's what I'd like to see. What is your vision? It's not saying it's going to happen because there are a lot of steps. Board of Selectmen has input. Obviously, there's negotiations that are going to take place. But I, I, I would like to see what that vision is. That's what I meant by that. I, I feel a little uncomfortable talking about this when we're talking about a union position. It's probably something that should be I agree with you. We should get that formal request, but that's something I think we ought to discuss in executive session, quite frankly. And I think it's, it's a little premature, Mr. Slep and Karen had said. Let's find out what the duties are and what we're going to, if we're going to take anything away and that kind of stuff. And then, uh, I mean, we can get that as soon as possible. That's fine. But I right. don't think we ought to do this necessarily in an open meeting. I agree. I agree. I also agree. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you. Oh, so we, yes, Mr. Gula. Position, new title, and you set on the job description. You've got to advertise that in months, and maybe others who would be qualified to do it. That's what happens when you create. Right. Right. No, no, no. I thank you. Thank you. You know, one of the good things about the possibility of this and where it is involved in the union. I'm sure the union will remind us what our responsibilities are. Too. <laughs> um, I think uh, another person had a question. Yes, Mr. Galucci. Just a statement. Just a few points to point out regarding HIPAA. Personally, I was in that field for a long time. Um, and I think that the other carries its own penalties for any transgression. I think five or two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Secondly, anybody who has been can then train others, but it can also be codified in some kind of an NDA, some kind of a, you know, HIPAA record of the employee signs when the first take a perfect job. Being said, 
to create a position to keep more of the public money. So you might want to bear that in mind as well. That, that part comes out of negotiations, but you made a mention the point when certain employees, and I guess they only they only apply to the Board of Health. Do they have to do they sign a HIPAA agreement? No, that with I'm the aware. town? Um, um, not that I'm aware of. Uh, public safety employees, they are licensed in um, especially uh, especially power mags, they have their own licensing process and uh, credentials to which they have, to which they need to adhere. Uh, but we don't have uh, you know uh, like it's one thing we can explore in our um, um, in our employee policies. Uh, whether we need to uh, go down that road to specifically have a sign off, so we can look into that as well. You know, and, and this is no reflection on on personalities. And, and sincerely, it's about the position. Um, it certainly should apply in regards to the board of health. I can't think of any others. Off the top of my head, I don't know how much information Prime Time has. But if it would be wise that positions in the Board of Health that have that kind of information have some type of agreement drawn out no, and signed. I know where I work, I we all had to sign one too. Mrs. Gulak. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Working the board of selectors office considered confidential employees. I don't know if that's described and defined in the policy book. For example, this is Brady. And when I was at the university, every person considered to be under the president's office, whether you were situated in Boston or on a campus, was automatically a confidential employee. It had nothing to do with HIPAA. It had nothing to do with anything else. It was the structure. And no confidential employee could belong to any union anywhere in the UMass system. So certainly Mrs. Brady is a confidential right. employee. And I would assume uh, if uh, uh, Leanne isn't, she should be. They, they don't belong to unions. But they have to be people at the top level working with Roy who are confidential. So I just point that out. It's just not HIPAA. Well, but the difference between that and HIPAA, as Mr. Colucci pointed out, is that there are serious penalties, fines, lawsuits to the damaged party for violation of HIPAA. And then that, that becomes... The next question, if a member of the town violates HIPAA, is the town liable for their actions since they are an agent of the town? There are the departments of police and fire. And it clearly states in our liability policies, if somebody breaks the law, and violation of HIPAA would be a break of the law. Correct. Anyone in those departments gave out information about somebody they transported or something that happened, they witnessed that was really should have been kept confidential unless the court required the information. Right. Our liability is clear. You break the law, you're on your own. Okay. Okay. So it's not only the board of health, right? And we spy. Anyone who provides emergency services. My point in mentioning other confidential employees is because of the, I will call it the strategic position. Right. Not necessarily HIPAA, but certainly uh, the people that work in the board of selectmen's office, I'm sure, see information that could be of a personal nature that might fall under him. Okay? That's all I'm saying. But we do have at least three departments that would be involved. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Are there any further questions? I don't have any. Um, we don't um, actually have the minutes. But okay. I was looking for them. I couldn't find them. Um, do we need to take a motion to table in the minutes? 
since we don't have them. I'll make a motion that we table the, the minutes. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor, Mr. Pacheco? Aye. Mr. Cameron? Aye. Chairman Hall is an aye. Um, we will have our next meeting at 6 p.m. on November 2nd. With that being said, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Mr. Chico? Aye. Mr. Karen? Aye. Chairman Hall.